Get ready for the rivalry in Dixie in the 51st overall meeting between the Southern Miss Golden Eagles and the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs here today from Ruston, Louisiana. This is Conference USA Football on NFL Network presented by the Home Depot. It's another installment of the second longest running matchup in the 25 year history of Conference USA. And while Southern Miss has won the last four matchups between these two teams, La Tech comes in this season winners of five in a row coming into today. And what a battle for West Division supremacy. Both teams coming in 2 0 undefeated in Conference USA play. Hello, everybody. Welcome inside the broadcast booth here at Joe IA Stadium alongside the 10 year NFL vet Ben Lieber. I am Rhett Lewis. And if you like offense, and if you're into explosive players and you love dynamic plays, man, we got a game for you. Both these teams at the top of the conference in offense, and for Southern Miss, they're a big play waiting to happen. Yeah, get ready for some offense. La Tech, number one in the conference in total offense. Right. Southern Miss, number one in passing offense. And really, for, for Southern Miss, it's not about just getting the ball down the field in big chunks. It's short, intermediate passes, efficiency. They know that the strength of their offense is their wide receivers. Get the ball out quick, get it in their, their hands, make a guy miss, and pick up big chunks using their legs. So certainly a challenge for this Louisiana Tech defense, but maybe the great equalizer is the running game of this Louisiana Tech offense and the emergence of Justin Henderson, who leads Conference USA with eight rushing touchdowns. Yeah, a real balanced approach running and throwing. It starts with J.R. Jamar Smith, the quarterback. Sure. He's a dual threat guy. He can run and pass, but really the difference this year has been Henderson in this running game. He leads the conference in yards per attempt at 8.2. That's phenomenal, and they got big offense alignment that just clear the way for those guys at the running back position. So I think the success for La Tech comes down to them running the ball. Okay, let's say hello to the third member of our broadcast crew, Molly Sullivan, down on the field with Louisiana Tech head coach Skip Holtz. Thank you, Red. Coach, you said every time you win a football game, the next one gets bigger. When you look at the magnitude here, no one on your sideline has defeated Southern Miss. How does that landscape change today? Well, uh, hopefully it changes a lot at the end of the day and three hours from now. But right now, I mean, they do get bigger. This two teams, both of them middle of the season are both tied for first place whoever wins this is going to be in the driver's seat and it's going to go a long way for the rest of the season so uh, exciting it's going to be a great game great matchup it's Louisiana Tech Southern Miss I expect a great hard fought football game on both sides that said top two offenses in Conference USA how do you keep them in check well I mean you've got to take your shots you got to be smart with what you do you can never say we always do this because if you just say always they've got a really good football team and a very talented team and they can expose you in a hurry so it'll be two teams that are fighting their competitive beating their tails off today. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. All right, Rhett and Ben. Thanks very much, Molly. Louisiana Tech wins the toss. They deferred, so they will kick it off to one of the most electric players in all of college football and the only return man in FBS this year with two kickoff returns for a score. The last one went 100 yards in the Golden Eagles win over Troy. So we got a game. We've got an atmosphere here today. It was 130 degrees on the field in our first matchup here at Louisiana Tech a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but it's a beautiful day for football. We're underway at the Joe. And so the kick a yard deep in the end zone. It's not Adams. But instead, it's number 18 to Michael Harris. And he can go to nothing but green in front of Harris. And here he goes for the score. That's a way to open the ball game for Southern Miss. We can talk about starting fast for either team. Southern Miss takes the ball at one yard deep into the end zone. And they, all right, not going to take a knee and take my chances. Just a, a plain middle return for the kickoff return team. And it just opens up completely. And then you just see the speed. We talked about in the open the speed and the playmaking ability of these, these receivers. You saw one of them take it to the house right there. Yeah, DeMichael Harris is the one who went for the score, not Jalen Adams, the most dangerous guy on the field. Uh, but Harris with a terrific return, weaving his way through that tech coverage team. And that's where they've been struggling a little bit, Ben. Yeah, they really have. Special teams has been a little bit of an Achilles heel. And, and even for Southern Miss last week, they didn't play well in special teams either. And they said, that's going to be an emphasis going in this game. We can't just play offense and defense. We have to play three phases. And what a way to start this game. 
So to Michael Harris, you'll see him at running back. He's a converted receiver and one of those four three guys on this Southern Miss team. You saw every bit of that speed on that return. Head coach Jay Hobson of Southern Miss says he's got about seven guys that, that are in that low four three range. Not sure which one's their fastest, but uh, D Mike's got the jump on him right now. Yeah, 10-4, 100 meter guy. And you, as you mentioned, a bunch of guys on the outside that can run four three. And that's not handheld, that's electronically timed. So that is a legit time. That's legit uh, world class speed for Southern Miss. 100 yard return for DeMichael Harris to open this game just 13 seconds in and Southern Miss has an early 7-0 lead. So now we'll see Louisiana Tech's return team as Andrew Stein had that ball fall off the tee. He's got it replaced and ready to go once again. And they got a little bit of a boost last week in the return game Louisiana Tech did by putting Wayne Toussaint back there, the redshirt freshman. And he actually had a 65-yard kickoff return last week, their longest of the season. So here we go again. And Andrew Stein's kick goes out of bounds in the end zone. It'll be a touchback. And we'll welcome Jamar Smith to the field for Louisiana Tech. Jamar moving his way up the Louisiana Tech leaderboards with three touchdowns against UMass last week in their win. Ben, he has now surpassed Terry Bradshaw for sixth place all time in school history. You know, he's just so consistent and so experienced. You know, 33rd start here at Louisiana Tech. He knows what he's doing. He's, listen, he's seen every defense. He's seen every disguise. He's seen every coverage. He knows what's going on, plays very composed. You take a look at the impact players for Louisiana Tech. Again, we talk about Justin Henderson, the 8.2 yards of carry. And I think Adrian Hart had a big, big day in, in this game last year. They're going to move him around to try to find some mismatches. Thousand yard receiver from a year ago is Hardy, a preseason all conference selection. And here's Jamar on first down. And he's going to give it to his tailback, Justin Henderson, 33. And Henderson has been a force, as you mentioned there, Ben, as you get a look at these Southern Miss impact players here along that D-line. Well, it's going to come down to two stars and Demario Smith and Jacquez Turner. And Eric Kitchen is going to come in as a replacement guy there at the nose tackle position. All three of those guys, very disruptive. I think LaTeX is going to try to establish a run game, and it's going to be up to these guys up front to be disruptive and make plays in the backfield. Ethan Reed, who has made his 46th consecutive start, that's the most in FBS right now, is the guy that's down for Louisiana Tech, number 61. All right, welcome back to Joe I.A. Stadium. Fireworks early as advertised for that Southern Miss return game. Not Jalen Adams, but DeMichael Harris with a 100-yard kickoff return for a score. And now we're getting that Louisiana Tech offense out onto the field. Three-yard game from Justin Henderson to start things. And Ethan Reed, the right guard, was a little banged up. So we'll see if he's able to continue. He'll have to be down for at least a play. And there you see Jay Hobson, fourth year as the Southern Miss head coach. Actually, his third stint in Hattiesburg. His previous two as a defensive assistant for Jeff Bauer, who is actually announced as one member of the inaugural Conference USA Hall of Fame and will be recognized there in Hattiesburg on November 9th. And uh, certainly Hobson learned a lot from Jeff Bauer and has the Southern Miss Golden Eagles playing well here. So here we go for Jamar, a second in seven with Justin Henderson there, who had that first carry. And we're back and ready to roll. Little play action, and Jamar has got his receiver, Malik Stanley, and Stanley out across midfield. Let's take a look here, Ben, another big play to start. It's a big play, and it's going to be the pulling the pulling tackle of Willie Allen that kind of set everything up. Second-level defenders, red run, opened up everything in the middle for that little play-action pass. Malik Stanley, the graduate transfer from South Alabama on the Senior Bowl watch list. So good player out on the perimeter for Louisiana Tech. Gives him a first down just shy of midfield. Jamar will give this time, and it's Justin Henderson, and he is upended once again. That's Shannon Showers, number 15, the starter at the free safety position. Well, you can see right now that this is exactly what La Tech wants to do. They want to establish that running game, get everybody in their offensive line, getting downhill, give that look, and then watch out on first down after they establish hopefully a drive or two, then they go play action, then they take their shots. But this is all just set up for the passing game. Yard for Henderson on first, makes it a second nine. 
And Jamar's going to give it once again to Henderson. And once again, not much running room there, Ben, as that Southern Miss uh, defensive line is stout. Delmont Landry coming up there was recognized by the coaching staff as one of those guys with NFL potential as you get a look Ben, at this con at this offense for Louisiana Tech and they're, they're pretty balanced now coming off their best rushing game of the season a week ago. Yeah, they're definitely pretty balanced and yes, they they played against UMass last right. week and I don't want to say that they're the <laughs> they're horrible, but they're not a great football team. So you got to take that with a grain of salt. Third down and Jamar is cannot connect looking for Isaiah Graham. And he's a little slow to get up there. Rayshon Mitchell out at the cornerback spot in on the coverage. And Graham is still down. So we've got another injury timeout here. Rayshon Mitchell, Ty Williams, those cornerbacks for Southern Miss that will be challenged today. Well, as you see, if they want to establish the run game, that's what happens. If you're not successful on first and second down, then you're going to get long chains on third down. You become more predictable. You face a man-to-man -man situation just like they did uh, that, that Southern Miss presented themselves, and you have to create that separation. That was a timing throw to the outside. You don't create that separation. It makes it really hard for Jamar to fit that ball in there. So Isaiah Graham walking off slowly over to the Louisiana Tech sideline. He's a transfer from TCU, but was a big-time recruit, number three receiver in the state of Louisiana out of Bastrop High School. Haven't really Hasn't really found his rhythm in this Tech offense, just nine catches thus far. Well, I think it's always tough, you know, for receivers. You played receiver. Yep. It's not easy just to come in the, to any program and just pick it up right away because there's so much that you have to know, not only offensively, but what they expect out of you, what, whatever the defense presents itself during the play. And he just hasn't picked that up quite yet. So we're getting a check here on the Louisiana Tech punt team as it's fourth and long here. Brady Farlow punting to, again, one of the most dangerous returners in football. Jalen Adams also has a punt return for his score this year. He did that in the opener against Alcorn. He'll call for the fair catch, though, and it will back him up to about his own four-yard line. So we'll get our first look at the Southern Miss offense led by Jack Abraham as the fans here in Ruston got a good game here on their hands. Southern Miss up 7-0 here from Joe IA Stadium. Not yet three minutes gone here in the first quarter. Golden Eagles up 7-0 on their rival Louisiana Tech. And while Tech fans know Southern Miss quarterback Jack Abraham well, he started his college career here in Ruston, then went to junior college and eventually found his home here at Southern Miss. And he is for sure taking advantage of the opportunity and he'll hand it off here on first down. That was to Michael Harris, the running back that convert, converted from receiver early in the season. And, uh, well, he's got some friends out on the perimeter that can get things done, Ben. Yeah, they really can. We mentioned their speed, 4-3-1, 4-3-3, respectively, for these two receivers. It's going to be these guys making guys miss and creating big plays. Second down, Abraham will go to the air. And he's got one of those big play wide receivers. This is Quez Watkins. James Jackson there in coverage and brings Watkins down. But, man, he's, he missed the first two games of the season here, Ben, but he's already got 528 receiving yards. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. And I, and I would just watch number 21 for La Tech. He's Amik Robertson, probably their best cover corner. You may see him matched up on Quez throughout the whole game. And Jalen Adams in the backfield here, and Adams does get the carry, who... The Southern Miss uh, staff kind of uses a poor man's Tyree kill. He's got a couple of yards on first down. As you get a look at some of the impact players, and you mentioned him, Amik Robertson gets it done out on the island at corner for La Tech. Man, he is so physical. I love the way he plays. Only a junior, but I think he has NFL talent. And then Willie Baker, a little bit of a position change with this defense. Uh, he's not as productive, but probably has the potential to be the most disruptive player on the defensive front. Yeah, high expectations for Baker after a four-sack performance in the Hawaii Bowl last year year for Louisiana Tech. No sacks yet this season. Second down run for Louis, for Southern Miss and Connor Taylor, one of those throwback players that Bob Diaco, the defensive coordinator identified, comes up with the stop. I, I think it was pretty easy when we talked to him in the, in the meetings and we're like, hey, who's your kind of throwback players? Well, the guy with the long hair. Yeah. That, that guy kind of stands out. Here's the third down for Jack Abraham and he's going deep. And it looks like that ball bounced and will fall incomplete. But we got a flag here, Ben. Do you see some contact? I saw a little bit of contact, but it's, thrown, it's not thrown, it looks like, on the outside to where the ball was intended. I thought really Prior when they... the pass, holding, defense, number one. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Just, Justin Elliott calls the pass interference there on Lejarius Sneed. 
Yeah, we'll take a look at the, where the ball was intended. That's the matchup we're going to watch all day long with Robertson out there and Watkins. And I think the thing that we have to watch out for, too, that I've noticed this a little bit on film, these Southern Miss wide receivers, they do like to push off just a little bit. It's not always egregious, but they will extend those arms sometimes to gain separation. Fresh set of downs here for Southern Miss, and Abraham's got a little time, and he's going to let one loose for number five, Tim Jones. And Jones got another big play. This Southern Miss offense has a bunch of dynamic players. Jones, one of the more underrated, as you get to look at the Build Your Case presented by Home, the Home Depot here in Quez Watkins versus Amik Robertson. This is the career interception leader among active players in FBS with 11. Well, I think the one thing that stands out stature-wise is Amik is only 5'9". He's not a big guy, but and Watkins is 6'2", so there is that height disadvantage there for Robertson. First carry of the game for number 33, Kevin Perkins. And that Tech defense had him stopped initially, but looked like he kind of scored it through now in a nice gain as he's out to about the 25-yard line. Legarius Sneed in there to make the stop. Daryl Lewis as well as Connor Taylor. Well, that's obviously frustrating if you're defensive coordinator Bob Diaco. When you, you call the right thing and you get the guys that play in the backfield of the offense and you got a first crack at them, you got to bring those guys down. I realize that Kevin Perkins is a big guy. Six foot, about 220, runs really hard, really well behind his pads. But if you're going to make contact like that, you have, especially in this game, where it's going to be all about physicality. You can't, you can't have second chance yardage. So a big miss there, missed opportunity for, for Law Tech's defense. All right, second and three coming up here for Jack Abraham. And he's going to give it once again to DeMichael Harris. <laughs> Connor Taylor is all over the field here to start. Got some help from Kevin Murphy there as well. Yeah, he's really flashing right now. You're going to see the man in the middle, number two, just scrape, does a great job. Technically, he's supposed to take on that pulling tackle. But if you see the ball, and you don't have to make contact with him, then see ball, go get ball, and just go make the play. That's that linebacker in you coming out there, Ben Lever. <laughs> He's getting you fired up, I can already tell. So a third down here for this Louisiana Tech defense as they approach the red zone. This is kind of where this Tech defense has been at their best thus far this season. One of the best red zone teams in the conference. Abraham has time, and he's got an open wide out. It's Jalen Adams. Got the reception. He's going to get close to first down yardage. Ben, it's going to depend on the spot. Well, again, you got to pick your poise when you're going against this, this Southern Miss wide receiver court. you you got to mix up the coverages. You can't just tell them what you're going to be in pre-snap. That particular play, they go man-to-man, -man, and then all of a sudden you get these crossing routes, and you get these natural picks that sort of happen in the middle of the field. That's the reason for the separation. That's the reason for the easy completion there for Southern Miss. Going to give him a first down and not even going to measure it. So we'll go first and 10 now from the 22. As this is part of that ch ongoing chess match that we'll continue to talk about. So the missile look to the sideline, make sure they have what they want in that tech defense. The ruling on the field and the gain achieved is under review. All right, I thought that was a little closer than we usually see the officials try to eyeball things. And so we'll take a closer look at it here in our first replay review. Watch where Adams goes out of bounds and where the ball is when he gets out. So there he's down. Left knee was down. I, I didn't get to the 22. It's hard to tell from that angle. Let's check another. So take, take a look at the left knee. Okay. Where does that make contact? Right That's there, down yeah. right there. I don't think he got there. And I, I'm with you. I don't think that he got there. And, and Skip Holtz was on the sideline, head coach for La Tech, immediately, arms spread out. Yeah. He was he was about eight eight yards out on the field, yelling at the referee, like, how can you do, just definitively give them a first down? It wasn't that easy. It was much closer than you're thinking. Uh, this replay was initiated by the replay official in the booth, but coaches in college football can make that challenge if they so desire. And, so it looks like they're going to reverse things. So now if you're Jay Hobson and you got a fourth and short here just outside the red zone, what are you doing, Ben Lieber? I, I think you go for it. You know, you've got uh, you've got the physicality and the momentum on your side After right now. It was determined that the runner was down at the 22 and a half yard line, a half yard short. It'll be fourth down, Southern Miss. And they got it right. There you heard our referee, Justin Elliott, giving us that call. So they'll place it at the 22 and a half. And so it'll be fourth 
and uh, what about 18 inches or so? Yeah, and, and I don't even think that you mess around trying to hand this ball off. I think you just you take your quarterback, you go you go under center, you use a uh, well. It looks like they're going to go shotgun right now. They are going to go for it, but not the sneak that I was thinking about. And it is to Michael Harris in the backfield there to the left of Abraham. Let's see if this La Tech crowd here at Joe I Stadium gets fired up here for this fourth down in a rivalry game. One that Southern Miss has dominated in the last four years. It's like Abraham, a little change here. Oh. He's going to sneak it. He did exactly what you called, Ben Lieber. They set up in the gun, but then move in for the QB sneak, and it works. Well, it's a nice little cute design, too, because you get the back out of the backfield, and then you see the linebacker have to go out and adjust. So that tells them that, hey, we're in man-to-man -man coverage. We're going to take one more defender out of the box. I'm going to go right up under center, use my freshman All-American uh, from last year, get right underneath his hips, and just go forward. So a clever QB sneak design there from first-year offensive coordinator Buster Faulkner for the Golden Eagles. And that quick pass intended for Tim Jones will fall incomplete, but looked like he had some space if they were able to connect on that one. Yeah, he had some space, but in that situation, that's such an easy throw. I got to put that one on, on Abraham, just not putting the ball on his numbers. That ball was only had to be thrown about, about 10 yards. He threw it a little bit too high, timing was a little bit off, and he couldn't come down with it. He doesn't miss too many of these. He led FBS in completion percentage a year ago and all the way up there once again this year. Quick throw out to the right of Jones once again. And Jones is going to break a tackle of Amit Robertson and get a couple of extra yards up to about the 15. So that's kind of a theme right now that we're seeing from LaTeX defense is just missed tackles and missed opportunities. They're getting guys in the right spot. You know, if you have to read and react, maybe you're not in tough coverage right from the get-go, but they're coming downhill and making contact. They're just not bringing the ball carriers down on the initial tackle. Colin Scott eventually there to clean it up and will bring up another third down here for Southern Miss. Kevin Perkins checking into the game. Let's see what Buster Faulkner dials up here on a third down. Another man-to-man -man situation. Little pressure from the backside. Abraham able to escape. Oh, he's got a wide open wide receiver. It's Ray Ladner, the tight end. Second catch of the season, and it's a touchdown for Southern Miss. Well, this was all on Jack Abraham as he felt the pressure in the pocket. So he just uses his legs, buys a little bit of time. It's man-to-man -man coverage. I just got to have my receivers get a little bit more time to get open. And really, it comes down to James Jackson, number 10 for Law Tech. He comes off of his coverage. There's no need for him to attack the quarterback in that situation. Let this guy wide open. Andrew Stein puts the extra point through for Southern Miss. And it is an early 14-point hole for Louisiana Tech. Well, here it is. You see him come across the field, and James Jackson just comes off the coverage. He thinks, hey, I'm going to go make a play, but nope. The ball goes right over his head. Southern Miss touchdown, 14-0. It's all about toughness at Southern Miss. Love listening to head coach Jay Hobson uh, tell you how it is. You know, he kind of grew up in, in Mississippi, knows all about Southern Miss. Again, I mentioned his third stint now uh, as a coach at Southern Miss. And, he loves his toughness. He loves his physicality there, Ben. And, and I love his southern draw, and I love yeah. his demeanor. I mean, we sat down with him yesterday and just hung out with him, asked him some questions, and interviewed him. I just enjoyed every second of it. All right. That's Wayne Toussaint on the return, and he won't get back to even the 15, in fact. We're talking about Brett Favre. He's not the only Southern Miss legend and not the only Hall of Famer. Ray Guy set the bar high for future punters out of Southern Miss, a three-time first-team All-Pro with the Oakland Raiders. And there is Brett Favre from 87 to 90. He was a force here at Southern Miss. And a three-time NFL MVP and really kind of set a nice foundation for quarterback play out of Southern Miss. And on the defensive side, Jamie Collins, second-round draft pick out of Southern Miss by the New England Patriots, was traded to the Browns, and now he's back with the Patriots, helping to lead the number one defense in all of the NFL right now. Great players there in Southern Miss history. Justin Henderson on the carry here, and he's got a first down there, a 10-plus yard gain. 
And it's right, right about his average there, Ben. Yeah, it is right about his average. And the thing that they have to keep doing on, on that particular play is how fast he got to the line of scrimmage. Don't dance around. This is a really good, strong, physical defensive front. Get the ball, be decisive, and get downhill. Jamar going to give it once again to Henderson. A little less running room here. He gets knocked out of bounds. That's the cornerback, Ty Williams, number seven, coming up to make the hit. No gain. So it's got to be feast or famine, it feels like, in this run game. It's either a big play or they're getting stopped at the line, Ben. Yeah, no, you're right. It's it's either a big play yeah. or the last series it was uh, a one big play, one big chunk run, and then it was like they got stalemate on a first down. They got stalemate on second down. They got a third and long, and they couldn't convert. So they got to keep avoiding some of those feast or famine plays. Want to stay on schedule, right, if you're Skip Holtz calling these plays. He's got Jamar Smith complete, and that's Malik Stanley's second catch of the game for Stanley. Got it out to the 40-yard line. DQ Thomas, number 12, comes up to make the stop. Uh, and Ty Williams, a corner for Southern Miss, he was not in coverage, but he felt that receiver going right behind him, and he had to jump, and he was just, just a little bit too far away from batting that ball down. He had the right idea, but great job by Jamar of just going over the top of him and fitting that ball in there. All right, so we'll move the sticks here for Louisiana Tech, and here we go. Jamar throwing over the middle. He's got it complete, and that's his big slot receiver, number 80, Griffin Abair, out across midfield. And Abair has been one of these targets that just keeps getting better and better, and Smith has been trusting him as each game goes on, and he gets right in the middle of that zone defense and sits down. Up in the tempo here is Skip Holtz in this Louisiana Tech offense. There's Justin Henderson on the game. All right, getting ready for Sunday here, week seven. We're going to kick off week eight of the NFL on Thursday night football. Redskins visiting the Vikings there, Ben Lieber. Oh, a little yeah. Adrian Peterson revenge game. Yeah, you know, not his first time back right, at U.S. Right. Stadium, but it's going to be I, that defense and the Vikings are going to be pumped up to play against him. Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern on NFL Network, Fox, and streaming on Prime Video. Second down, and Jamar Smith going to try to keep it himself, and he won't get much. Brought down in the backfield by number 49, and that's Eric Kitchen. Well, and Kitchen, again, one of these guys that's awfully disruptive. They're going to rotate some guys on the defensive front to keep keep everybody fresh. And, man, he is tough. He is mean. He's got three and a half tackles for loss already on the season. Gets another one. But he can just read and react and be very disruptive up front. Struggled a little bit last year in this matchup, but it's kind of become a real part of their D-line rotation. Fourth guy usually in. Time out. Southern Miss, their first. So Southern Miss takes their first timeout of the half, and they're sitting pretty right now, 14-0 on top of La Tech here at Joey Stadium. And next Saturday, Conference USA heats up on NFL Network. Middle Tennessee playing host to FIU in an East Division showdown. It's Saturday at 3.30 Eastern live on NFL Network. Louisiana Tech actually has a win over FIU already this season. Was their first conference USA victory as they sit 2-0, just like Southern Miss right there, top of the West Division. Huge game here in the West as Jamar Smith has his offense in Southern Miss territory. Big third down. Jamar to the air, and he's got it complete. That's C.J. Powell conversion and we'll move the sticks for LaTeX. Well, you got to give credit to the offensive line. It was a creep up blitz by the linebackers to Southern Miss. They tipped their hat just a little bit. They need to time that up better and blitz right when the ball is snapped. They do a great job picking it up. Easy completion on the outside. C.J. Powell, the Louisiana Tech leading receiver in receptions. Oh, and Justin Henderson is wrangled down by Delmon Landry, and he won't have any of that, Ben. No, you talked about him earlier just being one of these guys. There's a lot of guys out here that have NFL talent, and that guy up front where number 17 on the defensive line. Don't see a lot of 17s on the defensive line, but this guy can play. He can be a Sunday player as well. Fifth-year senior, Donaldsonville, Louisiana, one of 11 players from Louisiana on Southern Miss's roster. Second and 10 now for Jamal. He's going to scramble off to his left here, pointing to his receiver, Wayne Toussaint. But we got a flag down. And Toussaint was double teamed by two guys in the backfield. It didn't look like a hold by the defense, but it looks like that's what it's going to be, a holding on defense Maybe on that as, pass yeah, play. As he was adjusting, as 
Prior to the pass, holding. Defense, number 15. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, I was thinking maybe maybe as Jamar was telling him, hey, to turn around and get to the end zone, uh, the DB may have grabbed on as Tucson made the turn, but. Well, and you know, scramble coverage is the hardest thing for these defensive backs. It's hard enough to cover these guys and just the timing of the play, but then when the quarterback breaks the pocket and they extend the time and the, all of a sudden the, the receiver, you don't know where he's going to go. And he may just cut it up and go this way, that way. It's awfully hard to cover those guys for a long period of time. First and 10 after the penalty. And we'll have our first carry of the game for the freshman, DeAndre Marcus, from right down the road here, Ruston, Louisiana native. Darius Kennedy comes up on the stop, and Marcus, an interesting player, had a big game last week. Yeah, had a big game last week. Needs to protect the ball a little bit. Yeah. Got, had a key fumble, didn't make a difference in the ball game, but was fighting for extra yards down by the goal line and lost it. But he's one of these guys that said, like, he just looks the part. Looks exactly the way you want a running back to look. His alma mater at Ruston with a big win over their rival, Wachita, last night on well, Friday Night Lights, and uh, he gets to take center stage here on Saturday. Second out play again is the give to Marcus. Rakeem Booth comes up and makes the stop, and he is the guy that makes that defense go on the second level, Ben, at linebacker. Well, they're awfully co close because Marcus just about took that one to the house. Tempo, Tempo, and it's Marcus again with the first down on third and short. They really used the, the quick, hey, get up and go to their advantage on this drive. Well, they also understand you're going to see a substitution here by Louisiana Tech, which is going to allow the defense to substitute if they want. But they know that they got to tire these guys out up front, and they rely on a rotation. So as much as they can keep that rotation at bay, they can gain an advantage. Four wide receivers now for Jamar Smith. Again, Justin Henderson back into the ball game. This is his kind of area. Eight rushing touchdowns already this season. That leads Conference USA. And on a first and goal, little play action. Jamar going to try to take it himself. Not much there. Gain of maybe two. Swayze Bozeman coming in to bring down Jamar and force a second and goal. Yeah, Bozeman wasn't having it at all. They spread out the offense. They even get the running back on the three receiver side. So four threats over to the defensive right side. And Swayze Bozeman was very patient. Understood that his, his passing assignment did not take him out there. So all he had to do was watch Jamar Smith and watch him and mirror him to see where he went. He's a big player for that Southern Miss defense when Rakeem Booth was out with an injury for two weeks in the middle of the season. Jamar again going to try to take it down himself. He'll get inside the five. It's, does that look like design run to you, Ben? Well, I, I'm surprised they're going so much quarterback run game down here in the red zone. And I understand that you know, a lot of defense is tightened down. It gets harder to throw the football, and you gain an extra blocker. But you know, Darius Kennedy did a nice job there just being that, that roving guy in the middle that brought him down. Now a third and goal here from the five. Jamar going to throw it, looking in zone, and he's got Malik Stanley. There's your first touchdown for the Bulldogs. we got a flag on the play here, Ben. Does that look like offense, or are we going to let I this stand? I think this is going to be a defensive call on Ty Williams, number seven. Pass interference, defense, number seven. Penalty is declined. Results of the play is a touchdown. Good call there. Boy, did LaTeX need this one. Oh, boy, they need it. Well, just what we're talking about, how, how weird that the, the play selection was in the red zone. All of a sudden, they do throw the football. Great throw. Put it in a spot only where he could go and get it. You see Ty Williams right there kind of grab his hip and turn him around just a, just a tad. That's what the flag was all about. Right over Kyle Hemby, number 19, and then just out in front of the corner, Ty Williams. Terrific ball placement there from Jamar Smith, the fifth-year senior quarterback. And here comes Bailey Hale to put the extra point through. And he will. He's perfect on extra points this season. And that one makes it a 14-7 ball game. In the final seconds here of the first quarter. Well, just take a look at the ball placement. You talked about it, Red. Just put in a spot only where he could go get it as the receiver. Stanley does a good job just adjusting, fighting through the pass interference that was called right there on Ty Williams. And the concentration, the, the accuracy from Jamar Smith, that was the difference on that play. And you talk about needing to get points on the board. And not just three points. They needed to answer 
with seven yeah. points and a touchdown. They had a great drive. They grinded it out. It wasn't pretty, but they put seven points on the board and, and kind of steal it back a little bit of this momentum here for this home crowd. But you know what they got to do now? What's that? They got to kick off, Ben. <laughs> and for the second time yeah, today, right. Bailey Hale will tee it up with Jalen Adams and Michael Harris. He of the 100-yard return to open the ball game for a score for Southern Miss. So what do you do here? I, I, would, I would sky kick this thing as high as you can, make it look like a punt, and just kick it short, and hopefully take those two, 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 those two return game guys out of the picture and let some of the bigger upfront blockers handle this ball. And by the way, Bailey Hale put that ball on the tee. It does look like that's what they might try to do here. And they are just going to give it a, well, a quick sky, but to Michael Harris, plenty of room for him once again here. Oh, and a big hit. That's number three. Trey Baldwin actually hit the Southern Miss blocker into <laughs> DeMichael Harris. Did thing. you hear that? That was awesome. He comes down the field. There's violent collisions all the time on kickoff. But my goodness, he smacked that blocker right into the ball carrier and made that play. Well, we have some highlights so far here from Joe I.A. Stadium. DeMichael Harris leading it off with the 100-yard return. And then Ray Wagner. Putting Southern Miss up by 14, but Louisiana Tech's answer has this a 14-7 game. We're back after this. Southern Miss up 14-7 on Louisiana Tech as we get set to kick off the second quarter where they just honored Tech legend Louis, uh, Willie Rose and our Molly Sullivan is down there with him. Yeah, thank you very much, Red. A Hall of Famer all across the board. He's Good. in town uh, for Louisiana Tech's Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It all went down on Friday night. Your Good. former coach, Joe Raymond, one of eight inducted. Yep. Pretty special Friday evening for you. We had a great time, uh, you know, just to be there with Coach. And when he first got here, we were his first recruiting class and we're going D1 next year so uh we started the process of help building all this and we uh we had to go on the road and play some tough teams but uh we showed up and played real hard and you know for me being able to get a chance to come here this was my alabama this was my clemson and we played tough against a lot of good teams on the road and we had to, we had to go on respect yeah from day one you built this thing and the players i spoke with told me really did what we're trying to do now as we take a look at your bulldog making some noise what have you seen from your team I see, I see uh, they're doing good. Great, Skip Hunt's doing a great job. Five straight bowl wins. Uh, you know, they got sweets with fancy food in there. All this stuff is new. So, uh, like I said, we're so, we're so proud to come back and uh, so proud to be at the process of building this thing the way it is now. Hey, go celebrate with those Bulldogs, huh? They're making some noise. Rhett and Ben, good to have you here, Bill. Thank you for having me. All right, fellas. Hey, thanks very much, Molly. And they're up on their feet here at Joe I.A. Stadium after Amik Robertson comes up with his third interception of the season to turn the ball back over to this Tech offense. Well, and that's a smart quarterback play because that wasn't even his guy that he was he was going to make the play on. He came off his coverage, goes up over the top of the receiver. Such an athletic, such a smart play for Amik. Previous two interceptions for Robertson went back for scores. He brought this one back to the 30. Still really good field position for Jamar Smith as he's got a first down from the 30. And the handoff goes to Justin Henderson. Hole up the middle, and Henderson will score. Tech trying to even it up. Well, that's how you take back control of this game. You get a big defensive play from Meek Roberts, Robertson, one of your best players overall. And then you pound it down their throats in the run game with big Justin Henderson. Takes it right up the gut, untouched all the way to the end zone. 30-yard touchdown for Justin Henderson, his ninth on the ground this year to continue leading Conference USA. They love the interior of their offensive line here as Bailey Hale puts the extra point through and it paid off on that Henderson touchdown after the Amik Robertson interception. Well, take a look how athletic that play was for Robertson to go up over the top, locate that ball and get a nice little return. Then all of a sudden you just hand the ball off to your hot hand at running back and he takes it in for the score. It is 14 to 14. They tied it up here in Ruston. Here at 
Joe I.A. Stadium where Louisiana Tech has roared back with 14 unanswered points. The last touchdown here, Justin Henderson's ninth of the season to lead Conference USA at three a week ago against UMass and one already today. And it was a product of Amik Robertson, the ball hawk, coming up with an interception. Uh, he's a ball hawk, and I just love the, the fact that how smart he is. Watching the, le the top left of your screen, he's going to be the outside corner. Took a look at him right here. He's right there, all right? That's not his coverage. He's just reading the quarterback's eyes. He's reading the play design and how it's breaking down and says, you know, why can't I go over and help out? Why can't I go get that football? That's his mentality. Every ball that's in the air, he thinks it's his. And then once he gets it in his hands, he thinks, I got to score. He almost took that one back. He was, he was trying awfully hard to find some open space. Well, he's FBS's active career leader in interceptions for a reason. That is 12th of Amik Robertson's career. Impressive as this Bailey Hale kick will come to DeMichael Harris, a yard deep in the end zone, and Harris is getting free on the left side already with a 100-yard score. But guess who comes up to make the stop? There it is, Amik Robertson. So Robertson comes up to make the stop as a really a safety valve there for that Louisiana Tech kickoff coverage unit. Yeah, I thought that was actually pretty important to see him out there on kickoff. He's one of your best players, and why not put him out there on special teams? And, you know, you can run the wheels off these guys a little bit, but, you know, there are times where you said put your best players on the field at all times. Well, this is a week where you got to do it. you got to put your best out there on kickoff coverage with the uh, electric returners that Southern Miss has. And now they've got a first and 10 here from the 19. And it's a give, again, to Michael Harris. But check out James Jackson. How about the way he shed that block right there? Ben Lieber? Oh, you called it perfectly. James Jackson comes out on the edge. He's the, he's the guy that's responsible for anything on the outside. And we talk about having that outside arm and outside shoulder free, but he takes on the block square. Wasn't exactly the, the hardest hit on, on the blocker, but he does bounce off and does allow himself to go in there and stay free to make the play. Two-yard gain for DeMichael Harris. We'll make it second and eight. James Jackson, the leading tackler on this Louisiana Tech Bulldog defense. Quick throw for Abraham, goes to Jalen Adams, and look how he eats up grass in a hurry. Woo. I mean, just when you, you think that they, they've got it all bottled up defensively, he gets that little slip screen on the inside, and boy, you said it, man. He can accelerate, he can cover some ground. He got vertical so quick. 11-yard gain for Adams. Trey Baldwin there to bring him down for Tech, but they'll move the sticks. Now first and 10 from the 33. Jack Abraham, of course, coming off the interception on his last possession. He's got his three wideouts with him on the near side. Oh, and check out the penetration. That's the big fella, number 96, Kadarian Mason. Courtney Wallace in there as well. That was Courtney Wallace, the big fella, coming in to make the stop on Harris. You know, Courtney Wallace is seeing, he's, he's seeing the guard in the right, or the center pull on that side. So take a look at this. They're going to get these pullers, and all he's going to do is just chase their hips. <laughs> all right, well, if you're going to leave me, I'm just going to go right up field. I'm going to go make the play. If you don't make the play, it could be a big game. But if you're going to gamble like that, you can go ahead and make that play. Skip Holt singled out Wallace for having one of his best games of the season. Big hit from Amik Robertson on D. Michael Harris. And he is down. That a huge hit by the Tech quarterback. You know what we call Amik Robertson right now? Balling. He is balling. So let's just go through this real quick. He gets an interception on the last series. Takes it back. Nice little return. One play later, they score. Then the ensuing kickoff as a safety valve, what could have been a big return again. He's the guy that makes the tackle. And then here we are on this particular play. He's just playing out in the corner. There's no, there's no threat of anybody. He has to keep his eyes back to the inside if he doesn't have a threat sitting in that zone coverage. And that ball floats, and he delivers a shot right to the midsection, and it's a clean hit as yep. well. Somebody forgot to tell Amik Robertson that he's not 6'2", 225. <laughs> this guy, I tell you what, pound for pound, watch this. Oh and the thing I like about it, it was technically sound. Shoulder. Shoulder. Got his head out of the contact area. He went low. He didn't go right at his knees or his ankles, which all these ball carriers, they hate. And he didn't go high either. He hit him right in the hip, completely clean legal hit. That's a great physical football play. Certainly hoping 
to Marcus to Michael Harris can stay in this ball game here one of the most explosive players on the field and he is up it's Jay Hobson his head coach comes out to check on him you know we mentioned he was a converted receiver but Jay Hobson when he was the head coach at Alcorn State actually recruited to Michael as a running back to come to Alcorn but he couldn't get him certainly is making the most of his time here at Southern The North. result of the play is an incomplete pass. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, Louisiana Tech, number 46, taunting. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Oh. oh, that is a killer. That is number 46, his first unsportsmanlike conduct for the game. That's Ezekiel Barnett who gets called for the unsportsmanlike conduct just wiping out the terrific play that Amik Robertson made. Man, that's just unfortunate. Obviously, he's pleading the case with his head coach. Obviously, Skip Holtz is upset because that's a big play. You put you put Southern Miss back behind the chains. Everything is favoring your defense. And then after the play, yes, it's a big hit. Emotions are running high, but you still have to keep it within the game. So let's check this out here. After the Robertson hit, you see Willie Baker might have gotten could have gotten called for it and there's Barnett just kind of a little high stepping to go congratulate his teammate. I mean, let's let's hope that that's not what he got flagged for because that's just pure fun emotion. Looked like Willie Baker pointing at Harris on the ground might have been the one that could have drawn the call but it's called there on 46 Barnett so he's got to be careful now because they don't want to get another one or he's out of this ball game. Handoff after the big 15 yard penalty is to Kevin Perkins. And he's got a nice gain here for Southern Miss into Louisiana Tech territory. Daryl Lewis, the senior safety, coming up to make the stop. Well, and what a nice little combo that they have with DeMichael Harris out because of that big hit. And all of a sudden you get Kevin Perkins. You know, maybe not as dynamic. He doesn't have great feet, but he's going to go downhill, and he's not going to go down on first contact. These linebackers and these safeties and these corners, if you're going to come up and hit Kevin Perkins, you're going to feel all of Kevin Perkins. Nine-yard gain makes it a second and one now from the Louisiana Tech 47. And it's Perkins again with the carry on second and one. He'll get the first down in more out to about the 40, just shy of the 40-yard line. But that'll be enough to move the sticks. Willie Baker comes up to make the stop. And Willie Baker is coming off the field right now, a little gimpy. Yeah. Who knows what he tweaked there. He ran off on his own power. One of the uh, more disruptive guys out there on the defensive side, defensive uh, end side there for La Tech. And he's going to take a seat right on the medical uh, bench and see what's going on there. Meanwhile, it's a first and 10 now for Jack Abraham. Has a little time, and he's going to go for a deep shot. And it's incomplete looking for his wideout, Quez Watkins, Michael Sam, number five in coverage. Fifth-year senior corner is like, hey, I, I can play two over here on this side now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's a, a me can't get all the attention. I got to come over here and I got to guard some of these big guys too and, uh, and these big fast receivers. I can play a little bit too. You know, Jack Abraham, I think if he had that back, he would have put a little less air on that ball. He had just a small window in the middle of the field. There was the, the backside safety coming up over to make the play as well to help out. But you've got to put that ball a little bit more on the line and not allow so much air for the defenders to make a play. Get a look at Quez Watkins leads FBS with his 26 yards per reception. Quick throw, this one is out to Watkins, and Watkins trying to break the tackle of Michael Sam, but Sam is going to hang tough and hold on for what was about a three-yard gain here for Watkins on second. You know, it's nice to see there for Louisiana Tech's defense is on some of those quick throws, it's good to see your defensive guys up front get off the block and get horizontal. It's going to take away any sort of cutback across the corner space. And that, those sometimes are dangerous plays when they can cut across the face like that. But get those big guys running, cut off those cutback lanes, and bottle those guys up on the outside. Third down now for this Louisiana Tech defense here. Jack Abraham in the shotgun. He's got it. He's got pressure in his face. He's able to escape. And Abraham has room. He's going to get the first down. He's still on his feet. Abraham will score. Touchdown, Southern Miss. Another explosive play. And we got another flag on the field. Late, a very late flag on the field as well. So it looked like that came in after Abraham was already in the end zone. Perhaps another unsportsmanlike situation here. Well, you have to imagine that 
everybody's emotions are very high right now. This is a rivalry. This is a rivalry, it's a rivalry game. game. It's been physical. It's been tough. We'll maintain we'll your composure, right? right? The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, Southern Miss, number 15. That 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That's number 15's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Jack Abraham, Mr. Subdued with the unsportsmanlike? Well, they're calling a tight game when it comes to emotions right now. That That's the spike. spike right there. Oh, spiked he spikes it, yeah. the ball. Yeah. And that's a good call. I mean, I it's it's subtle. It's not much. You know, it's not a Gronk spike. Right. That's what we're used to seeing here on NFL Network is the spike with emphasis. But here we go. A little swinging gate on the extra point. Not fooling anybody. So it looks like Andrew Stein. We'll try to make it three for three on extra points. And he does just that. Stein makes it a 21 to 14 Southern Miss lead. 10.28 to go in the first half here, Ben. La Tech decides to blitz up the middle, and that's the disheartening part. It's come right up the middle. Nobody right there in the middle of this defense. And Abraham takes it in, and then here's the spike. Right, boom, right there. He'll take it, though, as he puts his team up. Seven points. Nine play 81 yard drive that took 411 off the clock capped off by Jack Abraham's touchdown run to put Southern Miss up 21 to 14 here at Joe IA Stadium. And these two teams, Southern Miss, Louisiana Tech, they are used to the explosive plays, Ben. As you can see, they're right at about their season average on yards per play. These, this is what these two teams do. This is who they are. It, it really is who they are. And, they, and how frustrating for, for La Tech. I mean, yeah. they had them in a third and long situation in behind the 50, and then unsportsmanlike gives them a free first down, and then Southern Miss goes down and scores on that drive. And so, you know, you got to keep your emotions in check. You know, you, you're feeding off the big hit. But you got to keep your emotions in check in a game like this. Yeah, now the unsportsmanlike on Jack Abraham with this spike after the touchdown, actually setting up Louisiana Tech with really good field position after the Wayne Toussaint return. They're going to have a first and 10 here. We just call it area three from the 46-yard line where it's time to go in and score now. Well, and they're feeling pretty good about themselves as well. I mean, they're running the football pretty well. They know that they can they can physically handle this defensive front for Southern Miss, which they came in this game with a lot of respect. They said, these guys up front are awfully big. This might be the best defensive front we're going to play all year, and they're doing a pretty good job, job so far. Justin Henderson already with 50 yards on the ground for Tech as Jamar goes to the air this time. He's been his favorite target today, Malik Stanley. That's another 20-plus yard pass play for this Tech offense. Rayshon Mitchell on the coverage. Well, he does a nice job of his tempoing his route because Griffin Bear was the inside receiver. He clears out, waits for him to clear out, and then he comes right back inside. That's an easy throw for him. Jamar going to pump it to Stanley and then go deep right sideline. Cannot bring it in. There's Wayne Toussaint. You and couldn't have put that ball any better than what he did. Ty Williams there in coverage for Southern Miss. And you talk about, we showed that graphic about how explosive these offenses oh. can be. And I tell you what, man, that ball was placed perfectly right over the shoulder and Toussaint just off his fingertips and off his hands. Missed opportunity for La Tech. Second and 10 now for La Tech. Back to the air, C.J. Powell quick throw and he had his Big right tackle, Dwight Stallworth out in front, but got wrapped up before he could even use him as a blocker. DQ Thomas coming in to make the stop. Yeah, a whole host of white jerseys, but Stallworth does have to do a better job of getting out in space. He's a big man, but he's got to get out there and find a target and block him. He just became a, a statue standing out there, and the rest of the defense just surrounded him. Not a very successful play because Stallworth could not get out there and make a block. Third down, Tech three of four on third downs thus far in this game. This one a third and eight. Jamar had some pressure. That was Rakeem Booth coming around the edge. And it looks like Jamar might have gotten hit right on that, that hand of the wrist. He's favoring it. Yeah, he's kind of grabbing that right thumb, although it looks okay now as he's flexing falling. it out. Kind of flexing it out. It looks like it got hit by one of the defenders as he followed through. That was the reason why the ball was thrown in the dirt. And you can kind of see him holding it a little gingerly as he's coming off the field. <laughs> So here at the 32, this brings up a fourth and eight. Bailey Hale comes on to kick. 
This is going to be, they're going to attempt a career long 50 yard field goal for Bailey Hale who missed two in the opening week but has not missed since. Here's Hale. Looks like he might have the distance and it's good. A new career long for Bailey Hale to put some points on the board for Louisiana Tech. Boy, he is pumped up too and he should be. Great operation, got just enough leg right on it. So after Southern Miss scores a touchdown, La Tech comes down the field and puts three points on the board. This is a back and forth affair here in Louisiana. 50 yarder from Hale, we're back from Joe I.A. Stadium here on NFL Network with Louisiana Tech down 21 to 17. USA football on NFL Network. This one has been better than advertised. Southern Miss to Michael Harris open this one up, set the tone with that 100 yard kickoff return. Well, we saw him lead the game early in the second quarter. I'm told by Southern Miss officials after that tough hit to the ribs, he is now icing it. He is out until further notice. His father actually joined him on the bench here on the sideline. They had a brief conversation. He assured Pops that he's okay and he will be back. Right. Thanks very much, Molly. I mean, we cannot underestimate, we cannot overestimate what he means to this Southern Miss football team. In fact, Louisiana Tech defensive coordinator Bob Diaco says that when DeMichael Harris came into the game for them this season at running back, it, their offense came alive. Buster Faulkner, the offensive coordinator for Southern Miss, said DeMichael Harris has changed the way I view offense maybe forever. That's how much he means to this team. Yeah, completely changed the recruiting process and who they're looking for as running backs because you know what, you want to find guys that can not only run but catch as well as we take a look at. This is the opening kickoff of the game and just watch the pure speed as he takes this yeah. thing to the house and gets them on the board early. And then here's the hit that we're talking about from Amik Robertson. Took a shot right in the side. It's the rib cage that they're worried about right now. Listen, having sore ribs and trying to breathe in a football game is awfully tough. Obviously, tremendous player means a lot for this offense. Hopefully, it's just one game in this game that he's out. And the reason that he was switched from wide receiver to running back was they lost their starter on the opening possession of the season, Travinsky Mosley, and he's been out ever since. And this is Kevin Perkins, who's now going to see a bit more action with the Michael Harris out, as Molly Sullivan told us, until further notice. But with his shoulder pads off right now, wouldn't expect him back anytime soon. Yeah, it, it looks like that his day is over. I mean, you take the shoulder pads off, and you're sitting there, and you kind of just saw how a little dejected he was on the sidelines. It, it looks like his day is over. Second down now for Jack Abraham. Trying to match the field goal or answer the field goal that Bailey Hale put on. Career long 50 yarders. He's got that complete to Jalen Adams. Pushed out of bounds there by Daryl Lewis and Connor Taylor. That'll be a first down for Southern Miss as they approach midfield. Yeah, some miscommunication on the outside. Robertson was the was the corner on the far next to the uh, the sidelines, and he came off his coverage to go make a play on the slant by the number two receiver and just left his guy staying out there. And as the play got over, he kind of looked at the sidelines and kind of tapped his, his, his chest, saying, like, hey, my bad, my bad. I, I figured out, I understand why I made that mistake. Yeah, but then he's like, but I've made that play before. So <laughs> exactly. and we've already seen it with his interception that set up the Justin Henderson touchdown. Near dead even in total yardage. Southern Miss with a three yard advantage right now. Looking to add to it as the handoff goes to Perkins. But there's penetration in the backfield. 96 there, Courtney Wallace. Kadarian Mason and the big fella Milton Williams getting it done for the Louisiana Tech defense up front. Well, we've seen Courtney Wallace make some plays. Check him out right there. He's just going to shoot this gap. Look at that. That quick arm over, get a big body mover in the backfield, and then not only that, make the contact and make the play yourself. There's no blocking schemes that you can come up with when you got a guy that's just going to shoot the gap like that and become a free runner from a defensive tackle position. Timeout. Southern Miss, their second. So Southern Miss using their second time out of the half, and we're going to be back right after this with Southern Miss on top. The elephant in the room is the conference championship. That's the elusive goal that we've had some success on the field. We've had some big wins. We've won bowl games. What we haven't done is we, we've won the, the West Division. We have not won the conference championship, although haven't played for it twice, uh, but we haven't been able to get that done. And so that's the elusive goal that we're certainly chasing.
Yeah, Skip Holtz mentioned the bowl games. They've won five consecutive bowl games. Only Wisconsin has a similar bowl streak. So he's done a lot here at Louisiana Tech. You know his dad, Lou Holtz, as the national champion head coach of Notre Dame. But the real champion of the family today is Skip's mom, Beth, who's being honored by the Ladies' Legacy in Orlando for her achievement. She's been fighting cancer for 20 years. She's the rock of this family and getting her just due today. There you see Skip and Lou there from their days at Notre Dame. Of course, Skip followed Lou when he left Notre Dame to take the head coaching job at South Carolina. Skip was the offensive coordinator, as you see there. In fact, uh, this, this was such a big distinguished honor for Beth Holtz that Jennifer Holtz, Skip's wife, right. never misses a game, took yep. the whole family down to Orlando for the ceremony, but not before she came to hand off her famous <laughs> Bulldog Crunch to us oh, on Friday so at our production it's meeting. so good. Yes. Thank, her, thank you for that. And, you know, talking to Skip and this new... Oh, Jack Abraham, Wes Watkins, wide open, Ben. Yeah. I'll finish my thought yeah. on, on Skip and, and his mom. You know, he was telling us about uh, the whole honor yesterday, and you could just kind of feel him get a little bit emotional about it, just kind of yeah. what it means with, you know, how much she's given back and the fact that she's getting honored, and you could tell that he just, he really wanted to be there with her, but obviously understand that he's got to go and coach a football game today, but, you know, he's in quite the battle right now here with Southern Miss. And she was going to be watching right up until the time the ceremony kicked off, so our hat's off to you, Mrs. Beth Holtz. Okay, so the big play there from Quez Watkins. Now a real scoring opportunity here for Jack Abraham in Southern Miss. Under six minutes now to go in the first half. Abraham's got the handoff to Kevin Perkins. Connor Taylor, again, coming up from his linebacker stop, spot to make that stop. Yeah, Taylor did a really nice job of just reading that. He had to fight off the block of the pulling tackle coming off from the, the left side of the offensive line. Does a good job popping him, using his hat and hands, and being free and making that play. Again, Perkins now getting the line share of the carries here for Southern Miss with the injury to DeMichael Harris. And now we've got a second down coming from the La Tech 7. Again, the handoff to Perkins, and again, penetration in the backfield for that Louisiana Tech defensive line to make the stop on Perkins. Well, this defensive front has just been all over the running game at times, just making plays in the backfield and just shooting the gaps. And that's been the big difference for those guys up front is they're not even concerned about taking on the block. They're just going to swim around the block, get into those creases, and get vertical. Three-yard loss for Perkins will now set up a third and goal from the 11. What you got here, Louisiana Tech? They're calling cards. They're tough in the red zone. And Abraham is going to the end zone for Quez Watkins. That one not close. Legereus Sneed was there in coverage. Well, it's a scary look right there for a defense when you don't have any deep safeties. They brought their safeties out wide, expecting something on the outside, providing some help and coverage. And they guessed exactly right. Jack Abraham was trying to get to that back left pylon to try to fit that ball in there. But an errant throw and a good stop for La Tech's defense. That's what they do in the red zone. They're only allowing opponents to score in the red zone 59% of the time. That's tops in Conference USA, sixth in the country as they force a field goal to attempt here from Andrew Stein. And it is good, so we're back-to-back -back field goals here. It's 24 to 17 now after the field goal, so they've got two scores and three red zone opportunities here for Southern Miss. Well, it's that whole bend but don't break mentality. You get Quez Watkins on a few plays before streaking down wide open on the right sideline, and then all of a sudden they get down the red zone and they can't convert offensively. They get three points on the board, that's great, but when you put all that work in, you have explosive plays offensively, you want to cap it off with a touchdown, so credit to LaTeX defense for guessing right, defensive front making plays once again in the run game and their outside corners and safeties doing a good job in the pass game against these very talented wide receivers. Okay, so let's see Andrew Stein will tee this thing up. This from the 35, unlike when he had to tee it up from the 20 after Jack Abraham's touchdown on their last possession. Back deep for Louisiana Tech, number 86. Wayne Toussaint, we've also got Smoke Harris back there, number 19, who Skip Holtz thinks has actually found his best spot as a returner in the punt return game, but he's back there as well. 
So Stein with a good boot on this one will force Tucson back about two yards into his end zone. He's going to take it out. He eludes the first tackler, but not the second. He'll get it out to about the 14, as we'll see this Louisiana Tech offense. But for Jack Abraham, been a pretty good day. He's got a touchdown through the air and one on the ground as well. For more now, let's go down to the field with Molly Sullivan. Yeah, Rhett, to think that Abraham in the ninth grade was told by a former coach at the University of North Carolina that he would never be a Division I football player. Well, how did he respond? He went home, he met up with his father, they printed off a sign, and he looked at that sign every day. It helped launch him to be one of the most accurate passers in the nation. Rhett and Ben, they say if you chase perfection, you might catch excellence. That's what you got here. He's upset when he doesn't complete a pass, but that's a beautiful uh, challenge to have. Right. No question, we got a ball on the ground, Molly. DeAndre Marcus puts it on the ground, and Southern Miss recovers. Huge turn of events here in this rivalry game, and Marcus is down. So we're going to see Jack Abraham once again after that fumble. Great work down there from Molly Sullivan to give us some background on Abraham, who was a Mississippi Player of the Year in high school. In fact, took his team to three straight state championship games. Now, they lost all three, Ben, but on the final play of his final game in his senior year, he was going in for a game-winning touchdown down on the goal line, but was stopped just short to lose a third consecutive state championship game. And on that play, Ben, he breaks his collarbone. In the emergency room that night, his dad tells him, if you keep giving the game that kind of effort, eventually it will give it back to you. Man, it gave me goosebumps when I read that. Yeah, what a special story. And, and that's the thing, it's like, you can look for these these players. It doesn't have to be quarterback, but you, you want to look for a certain height, a certain weight, and arm strength, and accuracy, and whatever. And some guys just have the heart, and he's the one of these guys that has the heart. And the, this, despite not being a, a prototypical quarterback, he's making it work. All right, so he's got the give here to Kevin Perkins. Let's take a look here what happened on the turnover, Ben. It's the give here is to DeAndre Marcus, the freshman, who, as you mentioned, fumbled a week ago. Oh, terrific work. Yeah, it's just terrific work by the defender to come in there, just put his helmet right on the ball. And immediately, though, DeAndre Marcus just went down and was holding himself injured on the play. The trainers came out. Yep. They assisted. He did walk off the field, maybe a little shaken up, but to keep an eye on him for the rest of this game. Shannon Showers with the terrific job to put the helmet on the ball, forced the fumble, and then it was Swayze Bozeman, Johnny on the spot, to fall on it and give Southern Miss another scoring opportunity here in the tail end of the first half. He, Abraham's got pressure, and he's going to go down. Looked like number 85, Willie Baker. No, 96, that's Kadarian Mason. There he is. 6'4", 297, the big fellow with his second sack of the season, and it's a big one for La Tech. Yeah, and he just beats his, he beats his guy right off the snap. He shows an outside pressure and then crosses his face with his quickness and with his hands, gets vertical and makes the play on the quarterback. Ball start. Offense, number 79, five-yard penalty, third down. So false start there on the left tackle, Drake Dorbeck, the fifth-year senior. Well, now back up Southern Miss here, Ben, a third and 21 from the 35. This is a big answer from this deck defense here after getting put on the short field. Yeah, but that sounds like a, an impossible feat to pick up a first down on third and 21. But again, these, this receiving core is special. These guys can make plays, so just hold on now. And a real prevent type defense, and Jack Abraham's going to try to take it himself. And it looks like Darian Mason coming up there to bring him down once again. He says, I'm not going to let that sound ruin this drive. He's going to Tech there first. 30 seconds. So Tech will take the timeout with 2.30 to go. Kadarian Mason at 90, number 96 here, Ben, is kind of putting the Bulldogs on, their, on his back here on this drive. Well, let's take a look. He's right there in the middle of the screen. He's just going to play against the center. Watch the hat, the hands, and violence. Boom, locks out. He gets his eyes on the quarterback, gets the vision. It's his ability to get off the block. What a tremendous job of just using that brute force to extend his arms and create that separation. You never want guys to stay blocked up front. And it's a quarterback draw. You're trying to pick up something cheap, something simple. But when you got a guy like Kadarian Mason making plays like that, it's going to be hard sledding for the quarterback. 
46-yard field goal attempt coming up here from Andrew Stein with 2.30 to go in the first half. Hey, don't go away when we hit the half. Patrick Claibon will be in studio for our NFL Now Halftime Show. Get you caught up on what we've seen here in this game. And in the NFL is Stein's field goal attempt is good. So a 46-yarder from Andrew Stein, his career long, puts the Southernness Golden Eagles up now by 10, 27-17. How about the kickers the in this kick, game here, The ben? kickers are showing out, too. We talk about the receivers, and we got some DBs making plays and some defensive linemen, and both kickers now sitting career highs. Stein, the freshman kicker from Slidell, Louisiana, one of 11 Louisiana players on the Southern Miss roster. So with 2.24 to go here and down 10, the Jamar Smith-led Louisiana Tech offense we are expected to come back out here. He's 7 to 10, 91 yards and a touchdown thus far. They've done the majority of their work on offense, been on the ground with Justin Henderson leading the way at 51 yards. Yeah, and I, I had imagined that with, you know, 224 left in the first half, that that's going to be the formula again. You want to ball control. Now, hey, if you hand the ball off and, and Henderson goes up the middle again, he takes it to the house, that's great. That's sure. what you want to do. But I think it's going to be the same approach. He's going to hand the ball off, kind of grind this clock out. You don't want to have Southern Miss get another possession here at the end of the first half. Stein has it teed up and kicked off, and that'll send Wayne Toussaint back into the right corner of the end zone. Again, deep in the end zone, but he'll take it out. And this time, Toussaint will get it out to the 20, just past the 20, as a late flag gets thrown from behind Toussaint. Check on that flag here. With last thing, Tech. During the turn, holding, receiving the 48. Yard goal taking the spot. Down. Justin Elliott there uh, telling us the holding penalty. Rich Eisen, Steve Mariucci, Kurt Warner, Michael Irvin, Ian Rappaport, and Cynthia Freeland, a host of reporters getting you set for kickoff with NFL Game Day Morning presented by Lowe's. It's Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern only on NFL Network. Get you set for a great NFL Sunday coming up here tomorrow. So now you get backed up to the 10 after the holding penalty, and that's not how you want to start here with the final 2.16 to go in this first half here, Ben. Yeah, you haven't have 90 yards to go to put the ball in the end zone is not ideal. But again, both these offenses have shown that they can pick up chunk yardage on any given play. So we'll see what happens here. I imagine they keep this thing on the ground. Little play action from Jamar Smith, and he's got pressure. And it's DQ Thomas coming in right through the middle, Ben, with the sack. Well, he's one of these special players on defense, and he just comes right in the middle of your screen. Look how well he times this ball up. He wants to make sure that it's not going to be a, uh, it's not going to be a run. He wants to fit the right spot. He waits for his defensive front to clear out that lane, and it's just a straight shot downhill. This guy's got 4-3-3 speed as well, so he can get from point A to point B in a hurry. It's actually his third sack of the season. That'll give him the Southern Miss team lead here. Seven-yard loss, and now a second and long here for Jamar. He's in his own end zone looking to throw. And he's got his wide out, 81. C.J. Powell makes one miss, gets across the 10. A little breathing room now for LaTeX. Well, a little scary there. You're watching Jamar Smith just sit in the pocket and pat that ball a little bit as he's five or six yards <laughs> deep in his own end zone. I was thinking to myself, throw Time the out. ball, throw the ball. Southern Miss, their final, 30 seconds. So interesting here, Southern Miss will take their final timeout as they hope to get a stop here on third and get the ball back. But let's see Jamar. Calm, very calm, very composed, but maybe not the area of the field that you want to be so calm and composed. But hey, he, he does a great job feeling that he was not in immediate danger. He had a good, good protection, good pocket. So he just wisely sits in there, waits for that crossing route to develop and just delivers a nice football. So that'll set Louisiana Tech up with a third and eight now as they try to keep the drive moving and try to keep the Southern Miss offense off the field as well. What a huge game this is here. Both teams coming in 2-0 in conference play, sitting atop the West Division. Of course, Southern Miss with a huge win at home last week over North Texas. It was actually the preseason favorite to win the conference. Mason Fine, the reigning offensive player of the year in the conference. And 
That Southern Miss team did a nice job at home on homecoming. Louisiana Tech, the big 69 points they put up on UMass for their fifth victory of the season, now sitting a win away from bowl eligibility. Well, and then you see that team, that team in third place, UAB, is playing really good football right sure. now. 400 yards of offense, and defense is getting after it. 20 sacks for those guys, so you got to watch out for UAB. Jamar under pressure again. He's going to elude the rush and take it himself, and Jamar will have the first down and get out of bounds. Huge play by the senior quarterback. Heads up play as well. Yeah, heads up play. We talked about his dual threat ability at the beginning of the show, and we really haven't seen much of it. And he is, he does want to be a passer first. That's the one thing I respect about his game is that he's gonna buy, he's gonna buy some time, he's gonna keep his eyes down the field, but only when he needs to. And that was a perfect time to pull out uh, the usage of his legs and pick up that first down. 18 yard scramble there from Jamar. Now makes it a first and 10 from the 29. Little pump fake, all kinds of time. Gotta Go left sideline, Malik Stanley, and he reels it in. So Malik Stanley has been Jamar Smith's go-to guy here today. That'll be his fifth reception of the game as he's nearing 100 yards here in this first half. Well, how impressive, not only the protection, but just watching Smith go through his progressions. He starts, there's a quick look out to the left to see Stanley, and then he looks to the right, goes through his progressions, there, and then comes back to Stanley on a back shoulder throw. Terrific work there from Jamar and Malik Stanley now seven yards shy of the century mark here. And Tech is driving another play action. Oh, and Jamar's able to get out of the sack. And now he's going deep for Stanley again, and he got him. Good play, Jamar Smith to Malik Stanley. Unbelievable. How did he get out of that one? He ducks under all the way. I mean, he's, he's just a few inches off of the ground. He ducks under, and then he was even the back pedal. Watch the duck under here. There's the pressure. There, then watch the back pedal. Back pedal, back pedal. Nice footwork. And Justin Henderson will do the rest from two yards out. His second touchdown of the game. Well, just as we talked about, Maybe they're going to keep this thing on the ground. They did decide to open it up and try to pass a little bit. You saw the leg work from Jamar, Jamar Smith. They extend the plays, pick up that one first down on third down to keep this drive going. It was a heave down the field to get them down to the one yard line. And then you get your big back to take it in for a touchdown. I'm going to have to go ask Molly to make sure that Russell Wilson didn't sneak into Jamar Smith's uniform. A Houdini <laughs> act back there as Bailey Hale puts the extra point through to make this a three a three point game. Let's take, we gotta take another look at that because Demario Smith thought he had a sack on this play. Well, all sorts of athleticism right there. He bends down and then watch the back pedal. The back pedal to elude and then he sets his feet and gets wow. his hips turned to get the ball down the field. Great adjustment to make the catch, but wow. That was impressive just to watch the quarterback work. And then again, it's just Justin Henderson going up and over that defensive front to so take this to a, to a, just a three-point lead now for Southern Miss. Henderson came in eighth in the country in rushing touchdowns. He's now got two today. So just when we thought that it was an adverse situation with the holding penalty and the kick return yeah, yeah. and then the sack, uh, they go 90 yards on six plays, just a, a minute 28 time of possession on that drive to bring this ball game uh, to make it a three-point game here 27 24 southern miss leads but now they've got a little time to do well and, and that's kind of what we talked about is like yeah in a perfect world you like to kind of grind it out and pick up a few first downs you know chew up as much clock as you can but now yes you get a touchdown but all sorts of time now for an explosive offense in southern miss oh and here we go with michael harris not out there that's number seven ty williams on the return and another big hit that is Trey Baldwin. He was actually the one that made a huge hit on a first quarter kickoff coverage play for Louisiana Tech. Does it again to keep the Southern Miss offense shy of the 20. Man, he is just an absolute missile coming down on kickoff coverage. The backup linebacker, he had a big shot like you're saying earlier in the game and then watch him just come flying in here to make this play. Literally, right flying. there. I mean, he was completely horizontal <laughs> to make that tackle. 
Yeah, go ahead and flex on him. Yeah, terrific work by Trey Baldwin as kickoff coverage was going to be so vital for Louisiana Tech today. Obviously, they let up the big play to open the game with the 100-yard kickoff return from DeMichael Harris. He's no longer in this ball game, though, dealing with an injury after a big hit from Amit Robertson. And there's Kevin Perkins on the carry. Courtney Wallace in that Louisiana Tech defensive front has been stout today. Yeah, and Courtney Wallace is coming off what the coaches say one of his best games of the year last week against UMass. And you turn the tape on, and, and they're right, man. Every, every single big play that happened in the backfield, Courtney Wallace was a part of it last week, and that trend is continuing today. So Kevin Perkins now with nine carries and just 32 yards. Louisiana Tech holding him to just about 3.5 yards a carry, and it looks like that's enough for Jack Abraham and Jay Hobson. We'll say, let's just take a knee and get into the locker room up three points. That's what they'll do. So 27-24, the score at the half. This game has been full of big plays, just as we expected, maybe more with the fireworks we've seen from the big-time playmakers on both of these teams. And the run game from Louisiana Tech with Justin Henderson. Impressive showing here for both teams. And let's go down to Molly Sullivan. Coach, you wanted to make Louisiana Tech one-dimensional. What's changed starting with their 14 unanswered points? Well, to be honest with you, you know, the, the, the turnover didn't uh, help early in the first quarter. But give the quarterback credit. He broke contain a couple times on that last drive. Made some big plays. We certainly didn't cover them like we wanted to. But, you know, we knew this was going to be a 60-minute ball game. And, and, you know, we know we got to play 30 more minutes. It's, a, it's an even game right now. And we've got to come out and execute a little bit better defensively. We're doing some good things offensively. But we have to continue that. Thank you, Coach. Rhett. Thanks very much, Molly. Southern Miss racking up 215 yards of total offense on their way to a 27-24 lead. But Jamar Smith's Houdini Act keeping Louisiana Tech in it at the end of the first half. And that's our halftime score, 27-24. Southern Miss on top. The NFL Now Halftime Report begins after these messages. Welcome back to Conference USA Football on NFL Network, presented by the Home Depot. It's a rivalry game, and it's been a rivalry atmosphere here in Joe IA Stadium in Ruston, Louisiana. The home team, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, down three at the break as we get set to start the third quarter here. It's actually been a really balanced attack from both teams here. Rhett Lewis here with Ben Lieber up in the booth. And uh, as you see here, I mean, the, the rushing yards for Louisiana Tech has kind of made a difference for their offense as well. Yeah, when they needed it. You know, right. I thought actually going to this game that Louisiana Tech was going to, like, be successful a little bit more on the ground, as you see. But the, look, look at the yards per play by That's both teams. 8.2 for La Tech and 6.1 for Southern Miss. So they're very productive whether they're running or throwing. So this was a matchup of the number one and number two total offense in all of Conference USA football. We expected the explosive plays from Southern Miss, and boy, did we get them right from the jump, Ben. Oh, right from the get-go. The opening kickoff, it was a 100-yard return, and it was it was too easy. I mean, that's yeah. the thing I was surprised at. It was, it was a straight shot right down the middle of the field, and it was nothing but speed and blocking up front. We talk about starting fast. A yeah. big game, you want to start fast. And they come out right from their opening kick and take it to the house and but, do it but That's boy, has Louisiana Tech responded with some physical play against the team that prides themselves in Southern Miss on being physical. Yeah, it's the defensive front for La Tech has just been outstanding. They're shooting the gaps, they're making plays in the backfield. And watch this hit right there by Amik Robertson. I mean, he made a, he made an interception earlier in the, in the game, and then he comes out right here and just develops a wallop right there. It's the physical play, not only by the corners, but the guys up front. And look at the guys on kickoff running down the field and just smacking people and the horizontal tackle right there. Just keep sending the message that they're not going to go away. Trey Baldwin has been a menace on kickoff coverage. He's made two huge hits. And now let's show you some of those explosive plays starting. And it wasn't Jalen Adams. It was the Michael Harris on the opening kick. Yeah, and, and it was, and, they, and he's the one that got on the receiving end of that big hit from Amik. And here we are with the start of the opening kickoff in the, in the start of the game. And he comes right out, right down the gut and shows off that 10-4 speed. And then you see the touchdown there. He's been making plays not only just running with the football for, for Abraham, but it's also throwing the ball as well. Utilize his legs there has been uh, something we didn't quite expect. He's talking with his uh, quarterback coach that he works with in the offseason, David Morris, and he was saying, uh, look, he's not the, the greatest athlete out there, but he's got just enough speed to get it done. And that we saw on that 30-yard touchdown run. 
for Southern Miss. And, you know, in addition to the explosive plays, Ben, it's also been about the turnovers. We got uh, a, a turnover by Amik Robertson that led to a big touchdown from Justin Henderson, and then the turnover by DeAndre Marcus of Louisiana Tech in their own end that led to the field goal by Southern Miss. Well, and, then, and he's thankful that it was just a field goal, and, and Southern Miss have committed a penalty to back themselves up, really took themselves out of a good opportunity to put the ball in the end zone, had to settle for three, so he's lucky that that fumble only amounted to three points. Okay, so a touchback to start the second half here. So we'll see Jamar Smith to lead this Louisiana Tech offense out onto the field as they begin the first, the second half here. Malik Stanley has been the favorite receiver of Jamar Smith thus far. He's already over 100 yards on the day, Ben. Yeah, he got 130 yards on six catches, one touchdown, and a long of 37. So, again, we're talking about explosive plays by both Southern Miss and La Tech, and Malik Stanley a big part of that. There we go, another big play to start it, and it's Jamar Smith to Malik Stanley once again. And again, it's great recognition by Smith to just see the singled up receiver Malik Stanley has on the outside. He beats the cornerback across his face, a very clean route again by Stanley, and then the, just the easy delivery by Smith to get him the ball. And just like that, Louisiana Tech already across midfield. And this time it's the ground game. Justin Henderson on the carry. Swayze Bozeman, number 28, comes up to make the stop for Southern Miss. Well, I just love the play call coming right out in the second half and just saying, hey, we're not going to just run the football and play this ball control. We're going to throw the football and try to pick up a chunk play. But we're also going to come back on the next play and use our big running back right down the middle of the defense. Malik Stanley already over 150 yards now after that reception. Career day here for the graduate transfer from South Alabama as Jamar Smith tries to get the call here from the sidelines. He does. It's a play action, and it's a long one. Jamar Smith. Oh, he's going to be picked off. Jamar picked off as he was going to the Stanley well one more time. It's the junior corner, Rayshon Mitchell, with the interception. Well, and it was Mitchell that just beat him to the route. He jumps inside, never loses the inside track there. And Jamar, I think, had a predetermined in his head to throw it to that spot. And it was Rayshon Mitchell that cuts across his face and runs the route for the receiver and picks this ball off. So after a hot start out of the gate for La Tech, they throw an interception, and Southern Miss is going to take over after the break. Uh, Louisiana Tech fans fired up here at Joe IA Stadium. Early interception from their Bulldogs has the Southern Miss offense coming out up 27 to 24 here in the third quarter. And as part of the year-long celebration of the NFL's 100th season, one game a week has been designated as the NFL 100 Game of the Week. This week, it's the Raiders versus Packers in a rematch of Super Bowl II. You'll see that one on Sunday. Tonight, though, NFL Network bringing you a special look back with a football life Vince Lombardi at 8 p.m. Eastern in America's game. The 67 Packers at 10 only on NFL Network. And Jack Abraham off the turnover. It's going to give a handoff there to Kevin Perkins. And for more now on the plan from both of these teams here in the second half, let's bring in Molly Soule. Rhett and Ben, when we sat down with Louisiana Tech, they indicated this would be by far the fastest defense the Bulldogs will see. We're talking faster than Texas. So the message on the home team sideline, if you don't play physical, we don't have a shot, and that is everybody. Skip Holt saying before the game, look, everybody's going to need to put on their big boy pants to prevent a nip and tuck battle. The charge for Southern Miss, Rhett, pin back our ears and put some pressure on them, guys. Good work, Molly. Thanks very much. Jack Abraham has his wide receiver, number five, Tim Jones across the middle there out near the 40 yard line. There's another one of those big plays that this Southern Miss offense is capable of. But tell you what, Ben, as Molly was talking about the physicality that Skip Holtz wanted to see, I think he saw it in the first half. Yeah, I, I think he saw it. I think he just wants to see a continuation of that and, and have his, his guys just continue to make plays up front on his defensive line. And again, have his guys in the back end challenge the ball every time it's in the air. 
Well, pistol formation here for Jack Abraham. He's got his running back Darius Mayberry into the game, and there's his first carry, but again, it's penetration. This is going to be the sixth tackle for loss by the Louisiana Tech defense today. Well, once again, it's Connor Taylor, the linebacker, that comes up and just smacks the pulling guard. And I tell you what, Southern Miss right now, you'll see him right there. You're going to watch Colin Scott in there, too. Watch him come down, take on this block right there. And I, they came out with a different approach. They're using a tight end in the backfield, an H-back type of fullback in the backfield. They want to get more downhill power football. At least that's what they're expressing on this opening drive in the second half. Abraham, he's got room to run. We saw him do it in the first half, and he's productive here as well, getting out near the first down marker. It's going to be about a yard shy, nine yard gain on the scramble from Jack Abraham. Just don't spike the ball this time, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> Willie Baker forces him out of bounds. You know, he does a nice job of just waiting, watching, feeling the pressure in the pocket, and you know, again, he doesn't look to run all the time either. He's not the most gifted runner, not the most athletic guy, but, you know, he can hurt you with his legs. And I, I tell you what, he had a pass to Tim Jones earlier that he did such a nice go job to see in the pocket, waiting for Jones to clear the linebackers and deliver the football. So he's exhibiting a lot of great quarterbacking right now. Abraham sends Derry. Oh, well, a quarterback sneak. Thing. It, it worked for them in the first half on a fourth down. Let's see if Jack Abraham is able to get it here on a third and one. This one's going to be close. Be this one's going to be real close. They did not get the push up front that he was expecting. And they are going to give it to him. They are. We'll move the sticks there. And again, that kind of creative play design aspect to send the running back out into motion, out into in motion, out on the perimeter, and then opens up Jack Abraham as he runs under center there real quick. Yeah, and then we watch the uh, the replay, and he just kind of goes just to the left of the center, and there was a little bit of a gap there, so he was able to fall forward, but certainly not a, not the push that he got earlier when they ran that play. Jalen Adams into the backfield, and Jack Abraham. Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Looks like he just lost track of the play clock there. A little delay a game as they had Adams and Darius Mayberry in the backfield together. Abraham trying to send Aylin, uh, Adams out into motion. Well, and if the officials couldn't figure it out, everybody on the Law Tech bench was yelling <laughs> it out for them. So they'll lose five on the delay a game penalty. And it looks like they went with the same play here. Sent Adams out into motion, but the give is to Mayberry. And Mayberry not going to get away from number three, Trey Baldwin. He's saying, I can do it on defense, too. It's not just on kickoff coverage. Nice play. Well, Baldwin does such a nice job there because Amik Robertson was coming on a blitz. You'll see the blitz right over here. That's if he, he's, he's supposed to be on the outside, but he goes up underneath. See him go inside there? Amik, yeah. So then all of a sudden, Trey Baldwin has to adjust on the fly and say, okay, I got to be out the outside defender now. And he does a nice job just fitting off of Meek on that misfit on the blitz. And that gets a nice tackle for a loss. Baldwin coming off his best game as a Tech Bulldog. Career high, 11 tackles against UMass. And look at the big boys up front getting it done in the pass game. Courtney Wallace deflecting that Jack Abraham pass to bring up a third and long. Boy, he has had one heck of a ball game. He's made a lot of plays in the first half, just getting through the line. And this time, he's like, all right, if I can't get to the quarterback, let me get my hands up in the air. You see the big left paw get up there, right in the passing lane to knock that ball down. Now the sophomore center, Trace Clopton for Southern Miss, has had his hands full today with big Courtney Wallace up there. All right. Southern Miss as good as it gets in Conference USA on third downs. They're three for six today. Right at about their season average, converting 50%. Can they do it again? Jack Abraham to throw. Wide open is his receiver, Jalen Adams, but he slips and falls, and he won't get there. He had a long way to go, too, though. <laughs> well, it's funny. You watch the Law Tech defense in that third and long. It looked a little bit like a prevent defense. The second level defenders are about, about 12 to 15 yards off the line of scrimmage, and they said, you can run all those crossing routes that you want. We're just going to sit right here. you got to go through a whole host of blue jerseys to pick up this first down. You can make it all cute. You can design anything you want. Throw it short. We're going to come up and make a tackle. Tell you what, Bob Diaco's defense has done a terrific job when put in bad situations by their offense. They hold Southern Miss to a field goal off the early turnover by DeAndre Marcus, and here they force a stop after the Jamar Smith interception. 
So Zach Everett punts it away. Smoke Harris gonna let it bounce, and it takes the Southern Miss bounce, and it's still rolling inside the five before eventually downed at the four. Jamar Smith in the Tech offense coming back. 8.45 to go in the third quarter. Louisiana Tech offense getting ready to come back out. Down three to Southern Miss with 8.45 to go here at Joe IA Stadium. Louisiana Tech Southern Miss part of the West Division of Conference USA that is very well represented in the state of Texas with four squads, including North Texas, was the preseason conference favorite to win it. Southern Miss beat them last week. UAB, the defending champions there in Alabama. Then you get your two Florida schools in the East Division with FAU and FIU. And in that mid-Atlantic region, Western Kentucky right now undefeated at 3-0 in conference play, but they're in a fight now with Charlotte today, also in that East Division. 25th year of Conference USA, and back when it all started, there's Southern Miss, the only <laughs> remaining original member of Conference USA. And uh, their big part of this conference's history, as Jay Hobson mentioned, one of the winningest teams in the conference's history. And they're up right now by three here on the road at Louisiana Tech. First and 10 from Jamar inside the five. He's gonna try to get a little running room with a handoff to his bell cow today. That's 33, Justin Henderson. Kyle Hemby, one of four preseason all-conference selections on the Southern Miss defense comes up to make the stop. Five yard gain for Henderson. It's nice to see Henderson just show some patience there. We've seen him have some bigger, bigger runs just getting downhill, but that time he had to use a little bit of patience and footwork to pick up some yardage. Second and five, blitz coming on Jamar, but he gets it away, Malik Stanley over the middle. He's gonna try to make one miss, he does, makes heavy miss, and then eventually it's number 15, Shannon Showers, who forces Stanley out of bounds, but not before he gets deep into Southern Miss territory. Well, you're gonna see him come out, out here off the play action. It's a little bit of a switch exchange route between he and the other receiver, and you see everybody freeze, right? In the, in the play action pass, and he's left wide open, a huge void in the middle of the field because of the play action responsibilities of everybody at the linebacker position, and he's left wide open. He's the go-to guy today for this offense. Malik Stanley, 56-yard reception. He's gonna put him over the 200-yard mark on the day with his eighth reception. Jacquez, Jacquez Turner comes in to make the stop on Israel Tucker, who we're seeing for the first time today. All right, so Malik Stanley, the graduate transfer from South Alabama, in his first five games, he had 182 yards combined. Today, he's already over 200 with 212 and a 26 yard per catch right now, average. Well, and we're only halfway through this, this third quarter. He's got a whole other fourth quarter to play as well. I mean, imagine, he, he might be pushing 300 yards today. He's gonna make Troy Edwards start sweating a little bit, who has the record for Louisiana Tech. Jacquez Turner, again, making the stop on Israel Tucker, who's kind of viewed by this coaching staff as the stability guy of the backfield, right? And we've got an injured Bulldog up front on the offensive line, and that's an area, Ben, where they've been really fortunate to stay healthy. All five guys have started all six games, and that's number 55, Drew Kirkpatrick, down there on the ground for La Tech. Well, and you mentioned it, the, the strength so far, this offense has been their, their continuity of the offensive line. And, and not only that, but they've got guys that can rotate in as well. So we'll take a quick break. We'll see what happens with Kirkpatrick. Hopefully he can make it back in this game. But it's 27-24, Golden Eagles over the Bulldogs. Southern Miss on top, 27-24 of Louisiana Tech in this West Division showdown. A battle for first place next Saturday. Conference USA heats up on NFL Network with an East Division showdown as Middle Tennessee plays host to FIU. Middle Tennessee right now locked in a good one with North Texas. They're down 17-16 uh, in the fourth quarter. That's Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time, live on NFL Network. The band is fired up. La Tech is driving here in Southern Miss territory. Six minutes and change here to go in the third quarter. Malik Stanley is already over 200 yards receiving. He's got eight catches, 212, and we just saw his long reception of his career, 56-yarder. Well, he's right up here on the top of your screen. Let's keep an eye on him. He's been the go-to guy, and they're going to need him on this third down. Third and 11 for Jamal. 
cannot connect. Looking down there, the near sideline at Wayne Toussaint. That'll fall incomplete and bring up a fourth and 11. This is kind of interesting field position here. And they're going to keep their offense on the field right now. Now, nah, here we go. Now we're seeing the special teams unit come out. A little gamesmanship. Yeah. Make them think a little bit. So Brady Farlow will come on for the second time to punt it away. And it looks like Southern Miss gonna, is going to stay in a, a safe punt formation to make sure they're not trying to fake it. Well, they don't even have a deep returner right now. They're trying to figure that out. Who's going to cover this? And Farlow is going to send that one to the end zone. And so that'll be a touchback, and Southern Miss will bring the offense back out. We cannot be here in Louisiana Tech and Ruts in Louisiana, not talk about Terry Bradshaw. It's quarterback here, a Tech Hall of Famer, 66 to 69, through the very first touchdown pass here at Joe IA Stadium. And then Fred Dean, a two-time Super Bowl champion with the San Francisco 49ers. He's a Ruston High School grad and then stayed played his college ball here at La Tech. Hey, you just heard from Willie Rofe. He was acknowledged here in the early part of this ball game. One of my favorite all-time New Orleans Saints. He's a first-team All-American at La Tech, the eighth overall pick of the New Orleans Saints back in 1993. You had a chance to play against yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, I don't even want to bring that up because he basically does. <laughs> he would just pound me in the sand the whole time. <laughs> Uh, it was tough sledding for anybody that went up against <laughs> Big Willie Rowe. Uh, he was, uh, he's a monster of a man. So Terry Bradshaw, some, sometimes, you know, not able to make it uh, because he's got his Fox duties on Sunday, but, you know, he's always here in spirit, as you can see out of the tailgates. <laughs> so a weekend at Bernie's action going yeah, on. Yeah, I love it. Always a presence with Terry Bradshaw <laughs> here on the campus of Louisiana Tech. That's great. Uh, Jalen Adams gets the carry from his wide receiver spot and not going to get anything. Uh, ben, is that another tackle for loss for this Louisiana Tech defense? That is another tackle for loss, and that time it's James Jackson, number 10. He, came, he comes up on the outside. He's the outside run supporter, and he just he sees it. He recognizes it. He reacts. He doesn't hesitate. Gets the ball carrier down, and now Southern Miss now with their third and long situation. So Southern Miss, three of seven on third down. The Tech defense got a stop on their last possession. Trying to get off the field here again. Snap goes back to Abraham. He's got pressure, but he gets it off. Oh, and it's bobbled, but eventually caught by Trevor Terry, number 82, and he's got just enough for a first down. Well, it was a late blitz by La Tech. It didn't look like they're going to do it. They did a great job of just disguising it. And then they're going to see a bunch of guys coming up in the middle of the field. And you see Terry just double clutch and catch that twice. Great concentration there to pick up the first down. Seeing a little more Terry because of the injury to Jordan Mitchell. He's unavailable today. Handoff from Abraham goes to Darius Mayberry, number seven. Courtney Wallace, again, there on the stop. <laughs> if there's a play to be made right at the line of scrimmage during the backfield, Courtney Wallace is going to be a part of it. He's had one heck of a day. He's continued to have one heck of a day. I mean, just look at the scars on his helmet. Look at that. That's just, that's just getting just sticking your nose in there each and every play. Courtney Wallace with his fifth tackle so far and his second for a loss. He's been living in that Southern Miss backfield. Kevin Perkins coming into the game again at running back here for Southern Miss. Uh, again, we haven't seen DeMichael Harris since the big hit from Amik Robertson in the first half that forced him from the game. Big part of the Southern Miss offense is down with it. And uh, Jack Abraham gets it off, and it's Jalen Adams, his wide receiver. But we got flags on the play and a helmet on the ground. Connor Taylor with the stop there on Adams. Probably a safe bet that this flag has to do with the helmet on the ground. You know, it's, let's get the call here. So Justin Elliott, we can't hear him, but he's telling you it's an illegal hands to the face on the Southern Mets offensive line. And that was number 97, Milton Williams with his helmet off. As we mentioned, he's one of those throwback players. He'd probably line up without it. <laughs> yeah, he, he might. I don't think he really cares. I mean, he, for being just a sophomore, he's he's a big man, 6'1", yeah. 271. And he talked to the coaches, Check. and Bob Diaco said, you know, he loves the way he plays. He's a grinder. He's just this guy that doesn't really care. He just loves to play football. 97, there he is. We take a look at him right there. Watch the hands to the face. 
Good that, battle, and it's just a left hand that sort of gets into this face mask and yanks his helmet off. Helmet's a dead giveaway on hands to the face, isn't it? Absolutely. Second and 24 for Abraham. Trying to make something happen, but he's going to go down. That's Kadarian Mason that wrangles Abraham down for another LaTeX sack. That's just an effort play by Mason. He didn't get there in the initial pass rush. He kind of he does a drive by. You see him go up over the top. And then it's just with effort after that. Retrace your steps, get after the quarterback. Obviously, good coverage in the back end. That's the whole reason that Abraham had to tuck the ball and try to pick up some more yardage. But there's Kadarian Mason. And again, another Louisiana Tech tackle in the backfield. That would be their ninth tackle for loss. If you're keeping track, their second sack of the day. And it's a big one to force a third and 28. Abraham quick throw out to Tim Jones. And Jones is going to get positive yardage, but not nearly enough to keep the chains moving. Ezekiel Barnett comes up to make the stop. Well, we saw it in the first half where it basically they're just trading blows back and forth. The scoring, it was big plays, it was big hits, you know, some missed opportunities. And all of a sudden we get in the second half and defenses are stepping up a little bit now. The offenses for both teams are kind of sputtering, making some mistakes and not, not protecting as well. And now we've got a beat defensive showdown here in the second half. Kadarian Mason's second sack of the day, the big play for the Tech defense on that drive that brings the punter Zach Everett out. For Southern Miss, Allen, he can't go out the snap, but there's nobody to stop him except for Darrell Lewis, the senior who just gets to Everett as he was racing for a first down in the broken play. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so close to being a botched punt and a scramble first down for Louise or for, for Southern Miss. As you see, the free runner coming off the side, the bobbled snap, and the, he's running. He's running. I'm going to get there. No, no Darren Lewis not. gets him down. <laughs> Welcome back to Conference USA Football and NFL Network presented by the Home Depot here with you from Ruston, Louisiana, Northern Louisiana and this rivalry matchup between Southern Miss and La Tech, one of the littler La Tech fans. Three points if you get it in the hole, pal. And by the way, <laughs> that's what we're in range for already for this Louisiana Tech offense after the botched punt snap that uh, resulted in really good field position as the punter was Really gunning for the first down, but Daryl Lewis wasn't having it. <laughs> he was trying, man. I'll give him credit. He obviously doesn't run with the ball very often, but he was running for his life trying to pick up that first down. Heads up play by Lewis to turn around and make that play and turn it over to this Tech offense. Here were the first and ten. Quick play action for Jamar. Got a little pressure and kind of took off a little quick there, Ben, and ended up getting some positive yards out of it, though. Well, it was a single read on the outside, and guess what? It was Malik Stanley out on the right as the single receiver. He tried to put a double move on the outside, well covered, and I think he just thought, I'm not going to go through my progressions. It's not there. I'm going to try to tuck this ball and pick up some cheap yardage. So Jamar closing in on what would be his ninth 300-yard game of his career. 251 yards thus far. 212 of those have gone to Malik Stanley. Yeah, it's pretty much been the Stanley show. I mean, that's that's what it's been. And, you know, it's uh, it's good to have, you know, they keep they have all these weapons and he's a guy that kind of emerged just today. Second and seven for Louisiana Tech and Justin Henderson has some room to run. Breaks an arm tackle from Swayze Bozeman and goes down inside the 15. Another big run for number 33. Rayshawn Mitchell and Kyle Hemby there to stop Henderson. Well, Bobby Holly, number 41, is the guy that's going to be right here. He's going to be the key block on this. It's a counter action. See him take some jab steps to the right, and you get out on the edge, and it's a big block by Holly that really springs him free. He immediately grabs his left knee, his left leg, and uh, he's still down on the ground right now, but he was the guy that had the key block on that run. This would be a huge loss for Louisiana Tech. We were talking to offensive coordinator Todd Fitch on Friday and said that you might see Bobby Holly even more than you usually do about a 25 snap type of game because he brings you that extra pass protection if you need it. You'd see him down in the red zone and as you pointed out Ben a real asset in the run game. Well a real asset and a real asset just on the team. You know he's a guy that you know has a specific role. You know he kind of does everything plays special teams offense whenever they need him to. He can run he can block and they respect him so much that 
They need him to a team captain. You know, and usually your team captains go to, like, to, to really productive players. The guys are on the field a lot. He doesn't get a lot of snaps, but he's so well respected. He knows his role. He embraces his role, and he gives 100% every time he's out there. Coaches love him. They, uh, they want to get him on the field as much as they can. They think he's just a terrific football player. You know what I mean? And uh, he's a man of the people. They say he relates to every one of his teammates. As you see, Justin Henderson at 79 yards thus far and a pair of touchdowns to up his total to 10 on the ground thus far this season. And it's a play action to Henderson. Jamar wants to go to the end zone. Ooh, dangerous throw there, Ben, as Ty Williams was there in coverage. You know, he's made some smart decisions throughout this game. And then there's some decisions just like that one where I, I feel like he's just he's just predetermined on where he wants to throw the ball. And regardless of what the coverage looks like, he's just going to throw it there. You that there was great coverage there. It didn't matter if he was going to put some loft on the football or not and make it a 50 50 opportunity. But too dangerous of a throw, especially when you're inside in the red zone. And this is an area where you might think you want to get the ball to Adrian Hardy. But we have not seen him on the field. Number six for Louisiana Tech. He's got his helmet off on the sideline. He's their best receiver as Justin Henderson takes the carry just inside the 10. Well, and we got an update from Molly Sullivan earlier that uh, she talked to coach about him and he just said he's not playing today because of a coach's decision. Interesting. Storyline to follow here is we've seen Javante Woodard, number 85, 84, and Wayne Toussaint, number 86, get some increased playing time in Hardy's absence. That's the end of the third quarter. All right, so at the end of the third quarter, Louisiana Tech knocking on the door of another scoring opportunity. They trail by three, 27-24, but a real opportunity lies ahead for Louisiana Tech when we come back to Joe IA Stadium. fan base here on the campus of Louisiana Tech. Their Bulldogs down three as we start the third quarter here. After nine scoring plays in the first two quarters, zero, zero scores in the third. As we open the fourth quarter here with Southern Miss leading 27 to 24, but Louisiana Tech knocking on the door. They're gonna have a third and five from just inside the 10. <laughs> the crowd now, they're is feeling it. Yeah, they're feeling it. Great music playing right now. We got a defensive battle here now in the second half. Yeah, get after it, man. Love it. Southern Miss brings a nice fan base when they head on the road, and their guys are clinging to a three-point lead here with Jamar Smith on maybe the biggest third down yet this game for the Louisiana Tech offense. Jamar with the give to Justin Henderson, and Ben man, does he hit the hole with purpose. Ooh, boy, he gets downhill fast, man. There's no hesitation at all. He wasn't looking for any sort of cutback or any sort of bounce to the outside. It was, I'm getting downhill, I got five yards to pick up, and he falls just short, I think, of that first down marker. Look how fast he gets down that hole. He needed five, I think he got four. Jaquez Turner in on the stop for Southern Miss. He's just shy of the five-yard line. That's going to bring up fourth down. Also keeping in mind here for Louisiana Tech, we've seen both of their starting guards, Drew Kirkpatrick and Ethan Reed, go down at different points in the ball game. Fitzpatrick is still in at left guard, but Joshua Moat has come on for Ethan Reed at right guard. So we'll keep following that for you as this is a big, Big situation for the interior of that Louisiana Tech offensive line. Well, you're seeing Jacquez Turner get helped off the field. He's a starter. He's one of the bigger guys up front. It looks like... Actually, they got six offensive linemen in the huddle right now as, as Ethan Reed is out there right guard, but Joshua Moat in there as a sixth alignment. Well, they were trying to decide if they are going to bring the special teams unit out or keep the offense out, and it looks like they're going to keep the offense out there and got to try to go for this on fourth down. And I, say, I think you, you've got the momentum. Just I think you go quarterback sneak now. Bobby Holly back into the game after the injury. Noah Petrie, number 95, in as an extra guy up front as well for Louisiana Tech. 
And he's gonna sneak it, Jamar Smith got it, no problem. Big push by the guy who makes it go up front for Louisiana Tech, and that's the center, Cody Russi. Well, and I like just the play design and play setup as well. They go to that full back, the full house backfield, sort of that T look. They've, they've shown that in the past when they get down to the goal line, and usually they take two of those guys. You don't know which one it's going to be. Are the lead blockers, and the third guy is going to be the guy that runs behind those guys. They get that look. They get the defense thinking they're going to go power football. And they pick up the first down with their quarterback. And again, they've got an extra offensive lineman, Josh Moat, there, left end of the offensive line. Handoff coming to Justin Henderson. This time, though, that Southern Miss defense is ready. Swayze Bozeman in there to make the stop for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, Swayze Bozeman, we haven't called his name in a while, but he finally said, enough of this, man. If you guys are going to run the football, I'm going to come down for my linebacker position and just make a play at the line of scrimmage. How about the job that Bob Diaco's defense has done on Southern Miss's offense here in the first half? Uh, and then here, this Louisiana Tech offense just keeping pace. Jamar Smith moving out to the right side. He's got Bobby Holly who reaches for the end zone. But a terrific play made by DQ Thomas to keep Holly short of the goal line. Uh, he was so close. He's not a big guy, but he tried to use his small frame to lay out and just get the, the front part of the end zone as they hurry up right now and go right to the line of scrimmage, try to get another play. Little tempo, big set again, and Jamar's going to try to sneak it himself. And they're going to call him just shy of the goal line on third down. So now another big decision coming for Skip Holtz. Southern Miss defense is firing up their crowd. Yeah, I think if you're going to go for it on fourth down as you go in there on the five yard line, you got to go for it again. Here's the surge on the trying to sneak it in there with the quarterback. Ooh, a little face mask, and maybe? I think his forward it. progress was stopped, is what they're saying. Yeah, he was reaching, as you can see, with the ball sitting on the goal line. They're going to go for it. Full house backfield once again. Jamar leaping touchdown, Louisiana Tech for the lead. And he smartly goes up over the top as, a, as opposed to just burying his head in there and groundhogging it because you're not getting the push. All you got to do is put that ball over the plane of the end zone, and that, after that, it's a dead ball. It does not matter. He does not have to be on the ground. Once that ball breaks that plane, it is a touchdown. Great call, great execution by Jamar Smith. As Bailey Hale was getting set for the extra point, a whistle no flag but justin Elliott was no play try for point well we we know that <laughs> That's why did we stop the play all right so now we're ready for the extra point for bailey hale in this west division showdown here at conference usa louisiana tech takes their first lead of the ball game and couldn't come at a better time here early stages of the fourth quarter the extra point makes it a four point bulldog lead at 31 27. well la tech grinds it out they had to go for it on fourth down they go for it again on fourth down touchdown la tech First score of the second half of this ball game gives Louisiana Tech a 31-27 lead. Jamar Smith up and over on the QB keeper for the score. And with that touchdown, Louisiana Tech has now outscored their opponents this season 61 to 24 in the fourth quarter. That's what Skip Holtz was talking about when he was trying to encourage his guys from a full 60-minute effort. Start fast, finish strong. Well, and that's what it takes. I mean, every coach is going to preach the fact that you have to play 60 minutes, four quarters. Every single down matters. And he's done a great job getting that through to his players, and they're strong in the fourth quarter throughout the season. But here we go. Kickoff here from Bailey Hale. 
We'll come to number seven, Ty Williams, who's in there at returner in place of the injured to Michael Harris. And he gets down just shy of the 24-yard line as we head down to the sideline and welcome in Molly Sullivan. Right, according to Skip Holtz, if your feet touch the ground, you're tall enough. The shortest player in the 2018 NFL Draft learned how to use his size as an advantage right here in Ruston. Boston Scott, former Louisiana Tech running back who went from walk-on to being drafted by the New Orleans Saints in the sixth round and just last week promoted from the Eagles practice squad to the active roster. Ben, your former teammate, Darren Sproul, has really taken Boston under his wing, but determination, perseverance, it was all developed right here in Conference USA for Boston Scott, right? Oh, that's awesome, Molly. Love to see those stories, those guys making a count in the NFL. Boston Scott, certainly one of many NFL standouts for Louisiana Tech. Well, and I think you mentioned, she mentioned uh, Darren Sproles in that, and I think he was one of the guys that sort of turned everybody's heads and like, you know, we don't, we don't have to look for a certain height and weight anymore. If you can play and you're productive, you can play in this game and we're going to sign you. So, you know, it's nice that the, the Philadelphia Eagles elevated him and they understand that, hey, if, you, if you're fast enough and you've got the heart, you can make it on this team. 14-yard connection from Jack Abraham to Quez Watkins, but Abraham's under pressure here on a first down. Oh, and that's going to be close to throwing it over the line of scrimmage, but it looks like he just was able to get it off before crossing, and he finds Jalen Adams is wide out, and Legereus Sneed is able to bring Adams down. But now, in the blink of an eye, Southern Miss is inside Tech territory. Yeah, it was a Quez Watkins catch on the very first play, and then all of a sudden Jalen Adams just comes sneaking out from the right side, uncovered, and he was able to find it. Awareness by Abraham, knowing where he was and where the line of scrimmage was, and a quick throw out to Quez Watkins, who, according to Pro Football Focus, has the most yards after catch in Conference USA, and he shows you why. Let's go back to that scramble play by Abraham. Watch him again, penetration up front, but he does a good job of just buying time, buying time, and then he has his eyes just the flash of the white jersey from the corner of his eye, and he picks him up. Another quick throw here from Abraham this time. It is Tim Jones, and Jones making a couple miss, dragging some LaTeX tacklers. Legereus Need didn't bring everything there. And Meek Robertson, though, in to help clean it up. Well, and this was an issue, I think, in the first half for LaTeX defense. They had the guys around him. They'd get initial contact, but they wouldn't bring the ball here down. Tim Jones's fifth catch of the day for Southern Miss brings ball start. Offense, number two, five-yard penalty, still first down. Yeah, you never like to see that. The receiver jumping off sides there, false start on Jalen Adams. That's going to back Southern Miss up five yards to the 15. Just to say, Tim Ryan, number five, with his sixth catch of the day for Southern Miss. Fifth catch, rather, 80 yards. And uh, he's kind of the unsung hero. Oh, and another procedure call. It's a free play. And Abraham's going to try to take advantage of it. Oh, and that bounces in and out of a couple of players' hands, including Michael Sam, number five. But this is going to be offsides on Louisiana Tech. Yeah, Michael Sam was just standing there. Offside. Defense, number 95. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. He was just standing there like a center fielder trying to catch a pop fly. He understood that with the free play, they're going to take a shot to the end zone. Wouldn't have mattered anyway, but you know, it would have felt good to get that ball. Sure. That's 85 Willie Baker jumping off sides. Good job by Tim Jones to help break it up. All right, so we have four shots here from the 10 for Southern Miss. First down as Jack Abraham looks to the sideline as Buster Faulkner sends in the call. Abraham again to the end zone. And Legereus Sneed in coverage gets locked up with Jalen Adams, and that's going to draw a flag. Yeah, that was a pretty easy call. I mean, great coverage. There's really no reason to keep your hands on him, and the ball's in the air. He just kept both of his hands Pass up. Defense, one. Albuquerque, I rule the ball's place. You know, as a, as a former corner, he has to understand that just the timing mechanism of those plays, you put yourself good body position, you got to locate the receiver's eyes. He does try to turn around, but too much contact with the ball in the air. So the pass interference call there brings the Southern Miss offense to the two-yard line. Handoff coming. Kevin Perkins stopped in the backfield. 
What a play, Kadarian Mason now for the 10th tackle for loss for Louisiana Tech. Grown man strength. Watch him just bring him down with one hand. Come here. Get down the ground. <laughs> a terrific play as this Louisiana Tech defensive line has proven to carry the mail today for the Tech defense. Now a second and goal from the five after the three-yard loss, courtesy of Kadarian Mason. Play action rollout here for Abraham. He was pressured right from the start, and it's picked! It's picked to the end zone! Amik Robertson with his second of the day, thwarting a Southern Miss scoring opportunity. Robertson's second interception keeps Southern Miss off the scoreboard, sends the ball back to the Tech offense. We're back after this. It was a big Southern Miss drive, getting all the way down to the five-yard line, and then once again, Amik Robertson for La Tech comes up with a second interception. I want you guys to take a look at this. Much like his first interception, right there. There he is right there. He's on coverage on Quez Watkins. But when the ball's in the air, there's no reason to stay in coverage. He just becomes a receiver. He locates and high points the football. This guy is not only physical, but he's so smart in the way that he plays and becomes an offensive-minded person when the ball's in the air. Among active players, nobody has more interceptions in their career than a Meek Robertson out of Thibodeau High School right here in Louisiana. And a little sudden change as Jamar Smith has got a hit. And he goes all the way down inside the 20-yard line. Griffin Abair comes in and sudden change with the big connection from Jamar Smith after the Amik interception. Huge play for the Tech offense. As a defensive player, we're always told after sudden change, watch the big shots. They did a great job on the fake. Everybody on defense thought this was going to be a run. And there's Abair streaking across on that deep over. Perfectly placed ball, hits him in stride, and then at the end of the play, Jamar Smith was high stepping down the field to celebrate. 70 yard connection from Jamar to Griffin Abair, who leads the tech receivers in touchdowns this year. And this time, Jamar gonna take it himself with a block from Bobby Holly inside the five, down to the three. We saw Bobby Holly earlier a few minutes ago get shaken up on a play very similar out on the edge trying to seal the block good to see him back in the game and like you said he had the key block as he went around the edge there sealed everything off on the inside on that designed quarterback run game second and goal now for jamar smith and the tech offense from the southern miss four the 70 yard reception from griffin a bear setting it up the interception from Meek Robertson, his second of the day, giving the offense another opportunity. Everybody on their feet here at Joe I.A. Stadium. Oh, ball on the ground. Trouble with the exchange, Jamar Smith and Justin Henderson. But Jamar is able to fall on a disaster averted. Boy, he just couldn't make a decision on whether he wanted to hand that ball off. He's going to do a few, few push-ups because he knows he put the ball on the ground. <laughs> But watch the exchange. He wants to pull that thing out at the last second. And Robertson just thought he was going to cradle the football. And he squeezed the ball. Excuse me, Henderson squeezed the ball. And then that's the reason why the ball hits the ground. And thankfully, he's able to, to recover the football. So now a third in goal from the five. Jamar will throw it. Looking again for Abair. Oh, it's some late contact. From DQ Thomas will draw the flag and a fresh set of downs coming after the penalty. Yeah, and I don't like that call at all. Pass interference. Defense ball. Foul for the end zone. Rule the ball's play. Automatic first down. That was a poorly thrown football. It should have been laid out in the front of A Bear, but he throws it behind him. This was an uncatchable football as he tries to redirect and make that play. And I I agree, DQ. You you had a you had good ball, a good body position. You get tangled up because of the errant throw, but that ball was not catchable. Yeah, it actually landed on the end line, out of bounds. And now we get the big boys back in. Extra offensive lineman, full house for Jamar Smith. 
And he'll give it. Justin Henderson out just shy of the goal line on first and goal. Kyle Hemby there to keep Henderson out. Well, and the always reliable Bobby Hawley, who's been a key blocker. Watch him on, on this block, just completely whiffs right there. Oh, just whiffs on the block. Tried to go low. Defender just steps right over the top of him. And Henderson was close, but not quite. Second down now for this Louisiana Tech offense from inside the one. Again with the full house backfield. Jamar, the give to Holly. Holly stretching for the goal line, and he's got it. Another rushing touchdown for Louisiana Tech. It's Bobby Holly. They said if we're going to win this football game, we're going to win it on the ground running the ball. And look at Bobby Holly flexing on him. You got to give this guy some love, man. He's, he's been out there banging heads, creating holes and lanes for the other ball carriers. Get down close to the end zone. Why not hand it off to your team captain and your lead blocker? So Bobby Holly extending the lead as Bailey Hale puts the extra point through. That's Holly's first touchdown of the season, and it comes at a crucial time for Louisiana Tech. It was a play action that got everything set up to Griffin Bear. He takes this one almost to the house as he steps out of bounds. And then it was a few running plays, and all of a sudden now you get Bobby Holly to punch this thing in. Celebrate, Jamar. Celebrate. Your team is up right now on Southern Miss late in the ball game. Hugs and handshakes over on the Louisiana Tech sideline as Bobby Holly's first career rushing touchdown puts Louisiana Tech up 38 to 27, an 11 point lead with just 6.28 to go in this ball game. And a rivalry game, Louisiana Tech has really responded after going down 14 nothing early. That capped off a, the Holly touchdown capping off a five play 80 yard drive after the interception from Amik Robertson and the big play from Jamar Smith to Griffin Hebert. Well, and one thing to keep in mind, you know, there's a lot of players for La Tech that have never beaten Southern Miss. None. There is not, not a single player on this roster for Louisiana Tech that has beaten Southern Miss. And Jamar Smith has had a huge game today. You know, he's he's talked about getting wanting to get a win against this team. And right now, I know that there's still some time left against an explosive offense, but they're poised right now to get their first win for anybody on this team over Southern Miss. Squid kick there by Bailey Hale. That's covered by Ma uh, Hayes Maple. And so that'll set up Southern Miss just inside the 25. As you get a look at Jack Abraham here, he's been really good at home. Seven and one in his career and the interception touchdown interception ratio really positive not as much been on the road No, not at all and it's always tough to play on the road But that's a pretty telling stat that clearly he feels pretty comfortable at home and you know Look at those two interceptions by Robertson today just a game changer at corner Empty backfield for Abraham as he got time to throw Trying to, to direct Trevor Terry out towards the sideline. That's where the pass goes, but it falls incomplete. And boy, I can't tell you what a difference the absence been of DeMichael Harris for this Southern Miss offense has made since he went out with the injury after the Robertson big hit. Yeah, we just never know how this game is going to be played out, but he's such a dynamic player. And not only just running with the football, but catching balls out of the backfield. You know, you can you pair him up with the, the quality and the talent of, of receivers you have on the outside. It becomes a very potent offense. Abraham, this time, has it complete. And that is 82 Trevor Terry. Colin Scott in on the tackle. Well, and, and now we're going to notice the defensive shift in philosophy for La Tech. They're going to try to keep everything in front of them. I don't expect them to get beat deep at all. Little tempo here from Jack Abraham in the Southern Miss offense as a third down pass is complete again to Trevor Terry. It's been targeted three times on this drive and has two catches as they move the sticks. Colin Scott again in there in the middle of the field for that tech defense. Yeah, and Colin Scott's been asked just like the other linebackers and second level defenders is to just get back, take away some of those intermediate throws, come down on the check downs and make the, the sure tackle. Here's Jack Abraham all day to throw as tech just rushing three again. It's Trevor Terry in the middle of the field finding some room in this tech secondary. 
Well, that's going to be the philosophy going forward. There's, they're just going to dink and dunk, try to get something cheap. They're okay with checkdowns right now because they still have some time on the clock and they, they trust that their offense can kind of score at will if they want to. So as long as they're in the field of play, just pick up this cheap yardage and get down to the red zone. Second and short here for Jack Abraham, just shy of midfield. Again, has some time. Going to swing it out to his running back, Kevin Perkins, who bobbles the ball. Oh, gosh, he stepped out of bounds a little prematurely. In fact, he's short of the first down. I think it was a, a little discombobulated because he took a shot, a glancing shot, right to the face mask and helmet, and that may just have confused him just a little bit on what was going on. Talking about the absence of DeMichael Harris, this would be a big spot, would have been a big spot for him, a third and short here. Instead, it's Perkins there in the backfield. And he'll get the carry, and Perkins has a little room, has a block from his tight end, Ladner, and trying to stiff arm James Jackson all the way down to the 30-yard line. They're going to go tempo again, but it was Amik Robertson who came on a, on a short-sided blitz, had a free shot, just missed him, and then after that, there was nobody there because they were, there was a big void in that, in that blitz side. That's the reason why Perkins was able to pick up the first down. First opportunity of the day and running back for Steven Anderson, all six feet two, 242 pounds of him at running back for the Golden Eagles. They'll fake the give to Anderson and Abraham going to the air. And that is too low for Jalen Adams, or rather Tim Ryan, Tim Jones. There it is. They got exactly what they wanted in the passing game. They saw Connor Taylor, the linebacker, turn his head in a man turn to take away the seam part of the field. And right when he turned his back, there was an in cut from the outside. There's a big void, and the ball's just underthrown. Second and 10. Abraham has the Golden Eagles at the Louisiana Tech 30. Jalen Adams, keep your eye on him. He's right there next to Abraham out of the backfield that's where Abraham wants to go and he's got Adams who tries to make a move on Connor Taylor but he's having nothing of it yeah good patience again by Connor Taylor he was responsible for the first offensive person in the flat he goes out to cover and settles his feet nicely doesn't stop his feet realizes that there's going to be a juke move put on him so he does a nice job of just settling his feet and making the sure tackle Louisiana Tech bringing that number one defensive line back out onto the field on this third down opportunity with Abraham in an empty backfield. And he's going to take a shot. Looking for Tim Jones. Lays out and it falls incomplete. Legereus Sneed again in coverage, but a fourth down coming. Now do you take the field goal here, Ben? Take the points if you feel like you can get it. If you feel like you can yeah. get it, you have to take the points right here. We'll take a look at Snead and coverage again. And La Tech got real lucky because this play was called. It was a primary one shot to the end zone. They were confused on the other side of the field as they had a bunch of defenders confused on what the coverage was. 41-yard attempt coming for the true freshman, Andrew Stein. The holder, Zach Everett. The kick is away. And it is good. Andrew Stein with his ninth field goal of the season. It's a big one for Southern Miss as they now make this a one score football game. They're trailing here at Joy Stadium. Welcome back to Conference USA Football on NFL Network presented by the Home Depot. Rhett Lewis, Ben Lieber in the booth here at Joy Stadium. It's a one score ball game after the field goal by Andrew Stein of Southern Miss and now Jay Hobson in his fourth year the previous three years he's had a top 25 defense in all of college football last year they were number three overall does he trust them enough today to kick this thing deep Ooh, that's it I I don't know man I think I'd go for the onside kick but you've got three timeouts you've got a pretty good defense although they've been a little leaky today and LaTeX is ready for an onside kick if it comes and we've got a stoppage and it looks like Southern, no, Louisiana Tech ended up calling the timeout. Timeout. Louisiana Tech, their first. 30 seconds. So 3.36 to go here. And when we finish up, join us for NFL Now after the game. Presented by the Home Depot, Patrick Claibon in studio. The Good Morning Football crew will give us a look at the big matchup in the NFC East with the Eagles and Cowboys. And O'Malley Sullivan keeping a close eye on that one. 
And we'll go NFL Social coast to coast. Keep you up to date with everything going on in the NFL as we get ready for a week seven Sunday. Back here in Ruston, Jay Hobson looked like he was going to kick that deep, and I wonder if that's what prompted the timeout from Skip Holtz. Well, I think I think Coach Holtz just wanted to see what the setup what are they was. Do? They, they, they have timeouts to burn as well. I think you just have to feel real comfortable about what you think you're going to face. And so that was a good timeout just to see the, the setup there for Southern Miss. C.J. Powell, the lone return man, and he's standing at his own 25 right now for Louisiana Tech, and they will just pooch it. And is that ball going to go out of bounds? You better get on it. That goes out of bounds, but that's a live ball. <laughs> that was hot. I, I don't. I don't mind that little mortar kick to try to kick it in the void, and hopefully you get a, a ball that sort of just bounces backwards and high up into the air. You got your streaking uh, ones and twos on the outside, unblocked. Uh, not a bad setup, but ball is kicked out of bounds. Free kick. Okay, so the kickoff out of bounds is a penalty, but uh, it went out of bounds right around the 35 anyway, so they kind of knew that's what they were looking at. First and 10 here from the 35. As you get a look at the Bulldog offense compared to their season averages, they're exceeding expectations thus far, especially in the past game as Jamar Smith is over 300. Well, again, they talked about winning this game on the ground. You see the four rushing TDs, but, you know, it's about balance. You know, we we're talking about the, the two juggernaut offenses. You know, Southern Miss did everything through the air. You know, they were, they were the worst, second to worst rushing offense in Conference USA, but the best passing offense. But La Tech did it through the ground. They're doing it through the air. That balanced approach is awfully hard on any defense. As the officials try to figure out this latest whistle, Jamar Smith will head to the sideline where his play caller and head coach Skip Holtz awaits. And it's really interesting that they're having such success here without Adrian Hardy, their yeah, leading receiver and, and a year ago. Let's get the mic. So I think what Justin Elliott was trying to tell us there is the ball actually went out of bounds at the 33, so they're going to take five yards in addition for the kickoff out of bounds, and now they'll have a first and 10 from the 38 after so the penalty. So there we go. We're all cleared up there now. We all understand what's going on. And, and yeah, you mentioned Adrian Hardy. He had a huge game in this particular game last year. He had 110 yards and a right. touchdown. Did not play in this game, a coaching decision to, to sit him out, but Malik Stanley has picked up the slack. Sure did. Over 200 yards receiving for number 15, Malik Stanley, as Justin Henderson gets the carry, but he has stopped Rakeem Booth, number 41 there, the middle linebacker, making the stop. And you see him go into the line of scrimmage there with just both arms on the ball. The worst thing you can do right now is any ball carrier is to cough the ball up and give them a short field that is Southern Miss. And I would imagine here, don't get conservative here if you're Law Tech. You've got a quarterback that can run and throw. I would expect to move the pocket and give him a two-way decision. Well, I was just going to ask you what this four-minute offense might look like for Louisiana Tech as they try to run this clock. Well, certainly not a play like they ran this last time. I mean, it was very gingerly run there by Henderson right as he went into the line of scrimmage. Second and nine after the one-yard gain from Henderson. It'll be another give to Henderson. He's got a hole, and he's into Southern Miss territory another big play in the run game uh, he just said uh gingerly run through the line of scrimmage uh you just go ahead and be quiet i think he heard you bud i think he heard you well it's going to be the it's going to be the polar that comes over here excuse me about that it's going to be the polar that comes all the way over here that kind of clears everything out Picture and right White when Stallworth. and right when he sees the block initiate that's when he turns on the jets so good patience by him to wait for that thing to open up love the vision love his ability to read the blocks i mean this was a guy that had bounced around with a couple of different schools before landing here at louisiana tech and skip Holtz says the stability here has certainly helped him he's so proud of justin henderson for taking advantage of the opportunity he's had with some injuries to israel tucker their starter to begin the season and then also jacques dancy who's been in and out of the lineup well, and the best thing about it is this how well he's improved every so, game he's embraced that role 30 seconds he's so, embraced that role and they said he just keeps improving every day in practice in each game on saturdays so back-to-back 100-yard -back games for justin henderson as he goes over 100 on that last carry 
5.7 average now with 103 on the day. And the rushing touchdowns are where they've loved Henderson's impact. He's at 10 already this season. Well, you knew going against a really good defense in Southern Miss that that 8.2, I don't think that was going to hold up in a game like this, but he's been grinding. You yep. know, he's picked up tough yardage. You know, when they need him to make a play in the run game, he's been there. So Southern Miss decided to call a timeout ahead of the two minute warning. They've got two remaining. It's been a lot of defense here for La Tech as we talk about the guys making plays up front. That was Courtney Wallace and then bam right there Kadarian Mason showing some strength. You see him again right here. Come on. One arm tackle in the backfield. We talked about Amik Robertson with his two interception. The guys at front, they got some plays in as well. Here's Justin Henderson again, this time going vertical to hurdle a tackler. He's got some hops too, huh? Swayze Bozeman eventually brings him down. So another timeout here for Southern Miss. That's their second of the half. 203 remaining in this ball game in a third down and three for the Louisiana Tech offense. You get this first down and you're well on your way to your first victory over Southern Miss in the last five tries. Well, and if you don't make this third down, you're in an awfully short field to punt. And the last time they did this, not even close. Ball, right. The ball went about five yards into the end zone. So that's also a risky proposition as well, because you're not gaining a ton of yards by doing that. So depends on how they how close they get to the first down marker. I could see them going for it on fourth down again. So let's see here. Third and three. Justin Henderson in the backfield with Jamar in the gun. Here's Jamar rolling to his left. Oh, CJ Powell drops it. CJ Powell dropped it. Well, I know he's going to feel real bad about that, and obviously that's a missed opportunity, but that ball was delivered about two yards shy of the first down anyway with the defender just trailing right on him. I'm, I doubt that he was even going to pick up that first down had he caught it. So now Louisiana Tech will send the punt team out. Brady Farlow will be back to send it away to the ever dangerous Jalen Adams. Has an 80 yard punt return for a score. Back in Southern Miss's opening day win over Alcorn State. Punt from Farlow will go into the end zone as Adams let it bounce. And Southern Miss will take over after the touchback. But Thursday night football is with you to kick off week eight in the NFL. It's the Redskins and Vikings. Kirk Cousins wants to make a statement in his first showdown against his former team. But Adrian Peterson looking to lead Washington to a victory. It's the Redskins and Vikings on Thursday night football, 8 p.m. Eastern on NFL Network. Fox and Amazon Prime Video. All right, so one timeout remaining for Southern Miss. They're down eight, so they would need the touchdown and the two-point conversion. Louisiana Tech has certainly relied on some pressure from their front guys, Kadarian Mason, Milton Williams, and Courtney Wallace sitting at 10 tackles for loss on the day. Well, and I think that's going to be the approach. I don't, I don't think that you bring more than four guys. A, maybe a four-man rush, a three-man rush, get seven to eight guys in coverage and keep everything in front of you. Empty backfield for Abraham. Oh, throws that ball a little behind Jalen Adams as Amit Robertson was looking for his third interception of the day. Oh, uh, you know what? Don't don't throw to 21. Whoever, just just take him and say, all right, wherever 21's at, I, I'm not even going to throw to that receiver because he is showing up each and every time they throw the ball. The ball is slightly behind. I I understand that, but this guy's a ball hawk, man. He's going to try to undercut that and pick off a uh, third interception today. Second and ten now for Abraham. Press coverage on the outside. 
July Stadium crowd getting into it as Abraham's able to get it off to his running back, Kevin Perkins, and he'll dip out of bounds after about a 14-yard gain just inside the 35. Well, you got what you wanted out of the defensive front. You want to get Abraham outside the pocket. He's deadly when he's able to set his feet and step into throws, not so much when he has to move on the run. Certainly takes away a lot of the deep ball because he doesn't have a, just a, a pure, strong, strong arm. He needs that base to throw. So they got what they wanted, just an error in communication in the, in the back end of the secondary. Fresh set of downs for Abraham. He's got a little pressure. Oh, there's going to be a hold coming. And it's not going to matter because it's picked off by number 46, Ezekiel Barnett. And he will take it the distance. Pick six for LaTeX to seal it. Justin Elliott trying to tell us that the foul is going to be on the offense and the pick six will stand for Barnett. Louisiana Tech padding their lead with a huge defensive play. Well, La Tech defensively, they bring four guys, but it's not just a four-man rush. It's the way that they're rushing. Watch all the X stunts up here. Guys are coming on the inside. Watch how everything develops. See the two guys go on the outside, and the outside defenders come up on the inside. It's that sort of confusion that makes the pressure and makes Abraham have the errant throw. He does not see Ezekiel Barnett at all, and that big long arm of 46 is able to pull that ball down and take it into the end zone. Good work by Barnett. Came into the game as the sack leader for Louisiana Tech, but making a play on the ball with the interception. Their third today of Jack Abraham as Bailey Hale puts the extra point on and makes this a two possession game. Now 44 to 30 as Louisiana Tech is quickly proving uh, why they are one of the best teams in the conference in this West Division showdown. Some tough work coming here for Jay Hobson and the Southern Miss team. Uh, especially after watching Abraham third, throw his third interception. Good pressure by Willie Baker there, Ben. Yeah, it was good pressure. And again, it was that same stunt, just a double X stunt on the outside for both all, all, all four off their defensive linemen. And then Ezekiel Barnett, again, he realizes that he's not going to be a guy that's going to cause any pressure. So he just kind of sloughs off of the rush. And fortunately, the ball is thrown right in his direction. He's able to corral the ball. And then you see the athleticism to take it down to the right side of the sideline there and take it into the end zone. Really padding the points now here for La Tech. And again, we go into this game talking about the offenses for both teams. But it's been Louisiana Tech's defense yes. with three takeaways so far today that has really shined and put them on top. Three interceptions, two sacks, and 10 tackles for loss. They've had 21 points off the three turnovers. Obviously, the pick six, a big part of that. Bailey Hale has the ball on the tee for Louisiana Tech. And look, if Southern Miss you know, has a shot at a comeback here, they'd love to see their return man extraordinaire, Jalen Adams, make something happen here. But La Tech's not going to give him a shot. Ball bounces off the hands of Hayes Maple. He's going to actually pick it up. But the officials will rule it dead there at the 14-yard line. Yeah, Hayes didn't realize that, uh, you know, his right knee was on the ground right. and he corralled that ball. So bad field position and great execution really by the kickoff team. That's what you want. You want to squib, squib that thing in the middle, make that football really hard to pick up because that thing just bounces all over the place. You ever try to pick up a ball that's moving like that? And you have no that's idea tough. where it's going to go. It's awfully tough. It's a nice execution. And now Southern Miss needs a big strike here for a touchdown, the, the two-point conversion. And then an onside kick recovery, and then another score to get back in this game. How about the We Are Bulldogs rolling here at Joe I.A. Stadium from sideline to sideline with the Louisiana Tech faithful? Uh-oh, shot for another interception here. Legereus Sneed gets his hands on it, but actually so does Quez Watkins. Wait, he came down with that inbounds? There hasn't been a ruling yet, and looks like they're going to call it incomplete. I'd have been shocked if he I, came down me, with that one. Me too. I, <laughs> so that is the ruling on the field. Is in an incomplete pass, and I, I thought at first I'm like, there's no way he came down with that inbounds. 
We'll take a look at the high point of the ball. You see Sneed making a play for the football. Ooh. They might have got it. But it didn't look like a clean catch. I think is that that's what they're looking at. So in college football, you still have to survive the ground in order for it to be a reception. And it looks like Justin Elliott is going to review this for us. Quez sure comes down with it. Now, does he maintain possession? Because the foot's down inbounds. Or are they going to say he bobbled it at all on the sideline? I think there was a slight bobble, but to me, that's a catch. I mean, it's a great job of just bringing that ball down into his belly. And when his foot hits the ground, to me, that looks like a complete catch and sole possession of the ball. And they, it looks like, yeah, terrific replays by our crew here in Ruston. So with Southern Miss down 15, counting on what they hope is a big reception here for Quez Watkins to jumpstart a comeback. Well, and credit to, to Jack Abraham as well, because he faced pressure once again from the inside part of that offensive line. He stayed Jack. strong. That's for you. It was determined the receiver had possession with a foot in bounds at the 41 yard line. It'll be first down at the 41 yard line. The clock will start on the snap. I mean, Quez Watkins, what a play. Because well, that looked like Jack Abraham was throwing it up for grabs there for a second. Well, and he, and he really was. I think in this situation, like, you just, you can't take a sack there. He was getting pressure up the middle. You have to just throw that ball out there and see if your athletic big receiver can, can high point it and come down with it. And that's exactly what happened. So with that, with that catch, Quez Watkins goes over 100 yards receiving for the day. That a 27-yard reception that now brings Southern Miss to the 41. 116 to go. Down two scores. Pressure again off Abraham's right side by Milton Williams, and there's his fourth interception. And that will do it. The third pick of the day by Amik Robertson. I, I, I'm telling you, just locate 21 where he's at in blue, and don't throw to his side. Watch him right at the, right at the start. It, it's all hands. It's. It's physicality. It disrupts the timing of any route. Abraham's trying to make a play, throwing the ball. His receiver can't get open. He lofts that thing in the air. And you see the athleticism. Robertson once again high point the ball and seal this victory. So we thought Amik Robertson might spend a lot of time on Quez Watkins after meeting with the Louisiana Tech defensive staff. And it turns out makes one of the game preserving plays for this tech defense and he said he didn't care who he was guarding because he said it doesn't matter who you put me on whatever guys on my side my best you're gonna get my best may the best man win I know I'm gonna win more than I lose and that was the case today yeah, he, he's a confident player he's he's everything that you want in a player he's hard on himself he takes hard coaching he wants to get better every day and you can see it come out on on Saturdays. He's he's fearless. He's absolutely fearless. And get used to this because this guy, I know that he's only a junior, but he's gonna be playing on Sundays some, at some point in time. And nothing like a little victory formation to secure a rivalry game win. As you see, Jamar Smith is feeling it down on the ground, down on the field there. And so is everybody inside Joe IA Stadium. I'm happy for these guys. Like you said, you know, not not one of these guys on the roster have beaten Southern Miss. So what a special game to be in a battle for Look Conference USA West. He's going to autograph a football oh, over on the sidelines as that kneel down by Jamar. Wait, he's going to autograph a shoe. He's going to autograph a shoe. Don't give that shoe away, kid. Amik Robertson just increased its value. There's the handshake as uh, Skip Holtz got the Gatorade back. As his Lotsack Bulldogs are bowl eligible with their sixth win of the season. They take control of the West Division in Conference USA. They do it with a 45 to 30 victory over their rival, the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. And they get their first win over Southern Miss in the last four tries. They had lost four straight, but now they reverse it and they are in command of the West Division. Big performance by the Louisiana Tech defense of Meek Robertson. And they took advantage of some turnovers to get it done. Montech winners from Joe IA Stadium.
NFL Now postgame report coming up. For Molly Sullivan, Ben Lieber, I'm Red Lewis, and for our whole crew here, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. And welcome to a post-game edition of NFL Now, presented by the Home Depot after that score fest in Ruston, Louisiana. Louisiana Tech getting the top spot in the CUSA West after that comeback win, 45 to 30 over Southern Miss. Let's take a look back at what was a game that was all over the map. We start in the fourth quarter. Jamar Smith with that one yard touchdown over the top. It made it 31 to 27. Louisiana Tech at that point. And then Jack Abraham. Well, he's picked off. This was the second interception of the game by Amik Robertson. He would finish with three and quite a performance from a guy who's got more picks than anybody in college football as an active player. Jamar Smith here after that interception to Griffin Bear for 70 yards. And that sets up Bobby Holly punching it in from the goal line, 38 to 27. La Tech now Southern Miss did have a chance down eight with about two minutes to go. Especially but Abraham was picked off by Ezekiel Barnett, and it wasn't just the interception. He, he turned it all the way back for the touchdown. The final score, 45 to 30. Tech atop the Conference USA West, and this is the scoreboard for the rest of the conference after La Tech gets that win. Right now, North Texas up 30 to 23 over Middle Tennessee. UAB big winners over Old Dominion and Western Kentucky on top of Charlotte. UTSA leading over Rice, and we're set for the start of UTEP and FIU. Quite a performance from a lot of Bulldogs, but Malik Stanley, the big standout. Eight catches, 212, and a touchdown. We'll show you how good it was coming up on NFL Now, presented by the Home Depot. We're back here on NFL Now, presented by the Home Depot. Big win for now the Conference USA West leading La Tech Bulldogs, including Malik Stanley, who had an opportunity to finish the job presented by the Home Depot. So how good were Malik Stanley's 212 yards today? Well, if you want to put it in 2019 Conference USA perspective, uh, nobody's had a better game. Let's, let's take a look at the single yard, excuse me, the single game receiving yards this season. Southern Miss was feeling pretty good coming into the day. Not only do they lose to La Tech, but Malik Stanley now holds that current, I guess, single season record for 2019 as it stands. 2,000, excuse me, 212 yards. Maybe uh, Skip Holtz is feeling 2,000 good right now. He's talking to Molly Sullivan on the field after the game. Coach, no one in your locker room had defeated Southern Miss until now. What was the winning formula? You know, just a group of guys that believed in each other, competed their tails off. It didn't start the way we wanted, giving up a touchdown on the opening kickoff of the game. But you know what? Nobody flinched. Nobody panicked. Nobody got on each other. There at the end, tried to make a first down, had to put it in the defense hands. Defense not only gets the stop, but they score and then get another pick. Just really proud of the way these guys all competed the way they played together. It's a great group of young men and great leaders and they deserve the credit because they earned it on the field. They look, we look. That's what you were expecting entering the ball game, a chess match. You go down 14-0 early. What changed? Uh, really, uh, nothing. I mean, we just we started started kind of coming into what they were trying to do to us. I told you early we'd spar, kind of feel our way, and it was going to be three hours of adjustments. And we started, and we started seeing what they were doing, and I thought we tried to attack that, and then they came back would attack us, and it was just a, a game of adjustments. But uh, like I said, our players believe, they believe in the coaches, the staff does an unbelievable job. Players are phenomenal. Really proud of them. Great win for our fan base and for our players. The reel that you made for Amik Robertson after the 2018 season, they were all correctable mistakes, his missed opportunities. It became his Bible. What did you see from 21 today? You know what I see from him every day. I mean, the guy's unbelievable. He competes like almost no other player I've ever had. He's humble. He's hungry. He wants to be great. Uh, but the way he plays, I don't care what his height says, what his weight says. I don't know. You can't measure that heart. And he's an unbelievable competitor. We'll catch you down the road. Congratulations, I Coach. appreciate it. Thank you all. appreciate it. And thank you to NFL Network for putting this on TV. We appreciate y'all. Thank you.